Hello friends, I am Nayesh Sheikh from Logdood.com and thank you for watching this video. In this video, I'll teach you how to make an LMS website. For those of you who don't know, LMS stands for Learning Management System or you can also call it an online course management website. For this video, I have taken inspiration from Udemy.com which is the number one website in this category. Udemy is an online learning and teaching marketplace with over 65,000 courses and 15 million students. I have tried my best to make this course exactly like Udemy in terms of design, features and functionalities. Let me first inform you about some of the core features that this website which we are going to create will have and after that we'll see the demo website which we are going to create in this video. First, here we can create courses that include different lectures. We can also create different types of lectures like audio lectures, video lectures, podcasts, quizzes etc. We'll also add the functionality that will allow other users to sign up and create courses. By creating courses, they can also earn commissions on those courses. For example, a user has created a course and set the price of $100 and you have set the commission of 50%. By the way, you can set any percentage of commission. You can set 50%, 90%, 10%, anything, it's all up to you. So if you have set 50% commission, the user gets $50 and you get $50. So this is how the system works. We'll also make sure that this website is user friendly, easy to use, fast, safe and secure and obviously beautiful in terms of design. Now let's see the demo website. So this is our demo website and this is Udemy. As you can see, this is the front page of Udemy and this is the front page of our website which we are going to create in this video. At the top, we have the first section which is a full width image section. In the background, we have a beautiful fill width image. The navigation is transparent as you can see, there is no background to this navigation. It is a transparent navigation and here we have the cart icon and the login button. After that, we have a title, subtitle and a search bar. This is very, very important for this kind of website. A search bar is very important because whenever someone is coming to your website, they are actually searching for some course. That's why a search bar is very important. Even in Udemy, if you see, we have a very similar section. It is a full width section with a background image. It has a title, subtitle and a search bar. After that, it has some categories and different courses. If you see throughout the website, it has different categories using the image and different courses. So for our website also, we have the same. In this second section, we have different categories using different images. For example, skating, photography, hair styling, guitar, etc. After that, we have our third section, which is a call to action section. We have an image in the background, a full width image. We have a title, subtitle and a call to action button. After that, we have some simple text. It's all up to you. You can have this or you can just delete this text. This is not required. This is just to beautify the website. You can put some text over here, like about your company, about your clients and so on. Now here we have the courses as you can see on the home page. Now there are different types of design for courses. For example, this is displaying in this manner. You can change the display. And here if you see there are around six columns. Here we have four columns. So you can easily increase or decrease the number of columns. You can have six, co six courses in a row, two courses in a row or four courses in a row like we have over here. After that we have the companies that create course on our website or you can have your clients your testimonials over here after that in the bottom we have a footer the footer is divided into four different sections or you can call it four different columns in the first column we have a logo this is a logo and a very short description about our company then the second section has latest post then we have latest categories or course categories you can set anything over here after that we have a subscribe form now I'm going to remove this subscribe form and I'll put something like this which you see on this website become an instructor and we'll give this link over here. So we'll that we'll see that later on how to do that. Then we have the bottom footer which is the copyright section as you can see again we have the logo, the copyright message and some social icons. We also have this button, a very small and beautiful button, but very, very useful. This is back to top button. When you click on this button, you're again back to the top section. Now let's see how a single course looks like. So let's open any one of this course. Let's open this software training course. 
and let's open some course from this uh, Udemy. So let's open this course. So this is how a single course looks like on Udemy. We have title, subtitle, the ranking, number of students enrolled, category and so on. And at here at the right hand side, we have the buy now button, buy the course button and some features with the icon like number of you know hours this course has, articles, we have certify, certificate for completion and so on. Then after that, we have the curriculum of this course. Then we have the reviews section. This is the review section. And at the bottom, we have related course section. Now in our demo website as well, we have the same design. We have this course at the top, the title, reviews, number of students enrolled, the instructor. Then we have short description about this course. Then at the right hand side, we have this course button. Take this course, the amount of the course, which is $20. Then we have some information with some icons like the duration of the course. We get a badge in this course and we also will get a certificate of completion. Now I'll show you how to create different certificates with this website. So just stay tuned. We also have the curriculum section. As you can see, this is divided into two different sections. The first section is introduction and the second section is advanced computing. In the first section, we have two different lectures and in the second section, we have three lectures. The first lecture is a demo lecture. Anyone can see this lecture and they can decide whether to purchase this course or not. And after that, we have some lectures. As you can see, I'm not able to click on or on these lectures because they are reserved only for paid users. So we'll see how to do all these things. Then we have our review section and at the bottom, we also have this related course section. We also have a sidebar over here like related course carousel. As you can see, this is a carousel and it has related courses over here, top rated course and course reviews. We don't have any reviews. That's why it is showing empty. I'll also show you some extra stuff like creating about us and contact us page. Now let's see how the about us page will look like and whatever we are going to do in this website is very, very easy because I'll be using a page builder and I'll just simplify your work. So this is the about us page. As you can see, we have a top section. This is a very beautiful section. We have a title, subtitle and a call to action button. Again, the nav bar over here is transparent. And by the way, we are setting different nav bars for different pages. For example, when someone is logged in, they will see a different menu, a different nav bar. And when someone is logged in and or for, for example, when instructor, when the person is an instructor, he's creating courses on your website, he will see a different navigation with different option. And when the person is a student who is purchasing a code or who is purchasing a course, will see a different navigation with different options. So I'll show you everything step by step. Just stay tuned. So this was our first section. Now let's move on. This is our second section. At the left hand side, we have a beautiful icon as you can see. And at the right hand side, we have some text and a call to action button. When you click on this button, if you want to become an instructor, it says become an instructor. So if you want to become an instructor, you click on this button and you will be redirected to that page. Then we have the third section, meet the instructor section. You can reach out and earn referrals and all those things. I'll also show you how to create these different things over here. Now let's see how our contact us page looks like. Click on contact us. As you can see at the top, we have a map and again, it is a transparent map. The navigation is transparent. That's why we are seeing the map throughout over here. Then when you scroll down, you'll see this section. Okay. We have two different columns. These everything is divided. The content is divided into two different columns. This is the first column. This is the second column. We have some short description about the company, the contact us details. We have this contact us form over here, send us a message. And here we have our company's mission, vision, process, and so on. We also have different pages like all courses, all instructors page, become an instructor, register, and draw those kind of page. Now, I don't want to waste a lot of time in just showing the demo website because we actually have to create this website and we'll see everything step by step. There is a lot of thing that you are going to learn in this video. So let's proceed further. I hope this you like the demo website and you guys are really excited to make this website. If you guys are really excited to make this website, then just stay tuned. 
To create any kind of website, whether it be a social networking website, an e-commerce website, an LMS website like we are creating any kind of website, we need two basic things, a domain name and a hosting account. Now uh, what is a domain name? Now the name of your website or the URL your website is the domain name. For example, over here it is lms.nayashik.com or in simple terms google.com is a domain name, youtube.com is a domain name, the name which someone will type to get to your website. So that is basically a domain name. And what is a hosting account by the way? Now if you see this website, we have so many different pages and so many different you know, data on this website. We have these images like these beautiful images and we have all the course file like we will save all the course videos and so on. Now everything which we save on this website is actually saved on a computer you know some running 24 7 somewhere in the world okay so that is what a hosting it it has all your website data and it will present that data to anyone who visits your website at any time from any part of this world now both these things are very crucial in fact you just cannot proceed without both hosting and a domain account now to get both hosting and a domain account you have many different options now the one which I prefer and which I suggest is TMD. Now what you can do just open a new tab and type in blogtocom slash TMD. The link is also given in the video description below. You can just click on that link and it will redirect you on the same link or on the same page. Okay guys, so this is the page. As you can see, it is giving some discount, but we don't want this discount. The simple reason is because this is shared hosting. We don't want shared hosting. We want cloud hosting. So what you can do, you can just click on this button which says get into cloud now. It will redirect you to the cloud page. So this is the cloud hosting page. Now there is a lot of difference between shared hosting and cloud hosting. Now let's see first what is this page and what it has. So here we have three different plans, starter cloud, business cloud and enterprise cloud. Now when we scroll down we see all the different features that these plans have. For example as I said you moments ago that hosting is nothing but a computer which has all your files. So the computer which has all your files has to be a very good computer. So if you see over here they have got 6 core CPUs. The computer which these guys are using has 6 core CPUs. 6 GB of DDR4 RAM which means the computer which these guys are using to host all your data all your files of the of your website is a really good computer so we can trust this company after that we have unlimited bandwidth that simply means that you can transfer unlimited amount of data on your website you can also upload and download unlimited unlimited data on your website so that is also a very good and very important feature especially for this website for LMS website because users will be creating videos and they'll be uploading videos if you get a lot of users we, we definitely need unlimited bandwidth so this is very very important after that we have unlimited SSD space now this is the most important feature according to me now there is a lot of difference between SSD and HSD most of you most of you guys must know this thing this is a very basic things but if you don't know what you can do you can open a new tab or you can go to google and type in ssd versus hdd web hosting and you'll get a fair idea about the difference between the regular hdd and the ssd that we are get that we are getting over here now you can read any one of the article or all of the articles you'll get a good idea about ssd hosting now what i do uh, i click on images so that we get images and we don't have to read anything let's open the first image as you can see here we have three different criteria the first one is speed as you can see the speed of ssd is way more than the hdd sometimes it is up to 20 to 30 times faster than the regular hdd and we want our website to be faster that is great for seo purposes it will rank your website higher on google and different search engines after that we have IOPS again it says higher is better and you can see the difference is just just great amount of difference then we have latency it says lower is better and you can see the difference again over here so you should know this the SSD is way more better than the regular HDD 
Now I hope you guys know the difference between SSD and HDD and if you see over here it has unlimited SSD now that is really crazy. Not only it has SSD but unlimited SSD space so this is really amazing. After that we have unlimited website hosted. Now this is also a very very important feature because what is this first let us let me explain you what this is. For example we are creating this LMS website. So we will host this website on this particular hosting plan which we are purchasing right now. Now suppose tomorrow you want to create another website and you don't have to purchase a new hosting plan for that. You can host unlimited number of website on the same plan. So this is also a very important feature. After that we have free domain. So we'll be getting a free domain with this plan, with any one of this plan actually. So nayashake.com is a domain name which I got for free when I signed up with TMD hosting. We have premium support free cPanel, beautiful web server, very useful web server. We also have wildcard SSL. Now this is also very very important. Now what is an SSL? This is the NSSL as you can see this secure certificate or secure socket. This is what an SSL is. You see any website and you will find this thing any good website. Okay, you see Udemy, you see uh, Gmail, any anything you'll find this thing. Now wildcard SSL means you can have unlimited number of SSL certificates on your website. For example, if you have created 10 different websites and you have hosted all the 10 websites on the same hosting plan, you can have SSL certificates on all 10 websites. Now that is really amazing. Because if you go to purchase a single SSL, it will cost you around 40 to 100 bucks. So you're saving a lot of money. After that, we have optimum cache, memory cache instance of 256 MB. Performance is three times better than these two plans. You also get a 60 day money back guarantee. So you can decide between all these plans. I would recommend you to go either with business plan or enterprise plan don't select the starter cloud there is a very simple reason behind that here you can host only one website so suppose in future if you want to create another website you will have to purchase a new hosting plan so that is not good so i am using the enterprise cloud so i'll click on this button which says get started so let's click on this now here you have to type in the domain name which you want for free for example, suppose you want Nayash Shake, obviously you won't want, but suppose you want nayashake.com, then you can just type in Nayash Shake 1 and you can select any extension. You have .com, .net, .org. If your website is country specific, you can select country specific extensions like .in for India, .uk for United Kingdoms and so on. Okay, after putting your domain name and selecting the extension, just click on proceed. Now here you have to put in all your basic information like your first name, last name, email address, phone number and so on. Then the second section is the payment information, the type of payment which you want to make. For example, if you want to make payment through PayPal, you can select PayPal. If you want to make payment through your credit card, debit card, your ATM card, you can select this credit card and put in all the information over here. Then after that we have purchase information. The first option over here is to select the data center location. Now you have to select the one which says nearest to you. For example, for me, Singapore says nearest to me or nearest to you. So I'll select Singapore. Now period by default, it is 12 months. I also recommend 12 months. Don't go with the one month specially because you'll have to pay $7 extra each month. So that is not at all recommended. Go with 12 months. Then we have domain privacy. Now if you want your mobile number and all those information to be private and not shown to anyone then you can just tick mark this or you can just remove this then we have the most important option according to me which is the promo code here you have to type in nayar 7 n a y a r and numeric 7 and click on apply now as you can see when we click down apply it says this promo code gives you 7% of this purchase and 7% is the highest discount that TMD offers on cloud hostings. So you're getting the highest discount possible. This coupon and all the links are given in the video description below so you can check them out. After doing all these steps just tick mark over here and click on checkout. Once you click on that checkout button you will receive an email from TMD which would look something like this. 
Now this email is very very important because it has all the important information like your FTP username, password, your server IP, name servers and so on. So make sure you save all this information. If you own multiple uh, email addresses then you can forward this thing to those different email addresses. Now what do you have to do? You have to click on this link which is at the bottom. The link is control panel link. Just open this link in a new tab. If you don't know your control panel link, you can just type in your website name slash cpanel. Okay, for example, if your website name is nayashik.com, then you type in nayashik.com forward slash cpanel and you will be redirected to this section. Once you come up over here, just copy the username and password from, the, from that email which you got from TMD and click on login. Okay, so this is our control panel. This is a very similar control panel. All the companies have a very, very similar control panel. There is a lot of options over here, but we don't have to do anything uh, with these options. The option which we want is under Softaculous app installer because we have purchased the hosting. We have our domain name. Now it's time to install WordPress on our domain name. So we'll click on WordPress over here, which is under Softaculous app installer. Click on install now. Now from here you have to select in the domain name on which you want to install the WordPress. Here if you are use if you are creating anything for the first time, if you are creating this website for the first time and if you are doing all this step for the first time, you will have only one domain. But I have done these things a lot of times so I will get a lot of options over here. So I will select the one, the domain which uh, on which I want to install WordPress, select that domain after that we have indirectory option. Now make sure this box is empty. By default WP is already written, written over here just delete that and make sure this box is empty. After that you have some site settings. You can give a name and description to your website. You can change these things later on so there is nothing to worry. Then we have a very very important section which is the account section. The admin account section. Here you have to set in your username and password. Now don't do the stupidity of leaving this thing to default. For example, by default it is admin and pass. Just delete this thing. Make sure you change this thing as soon as possible. In fact, just change it now. Okay, for example, I am changing this to Naya underscore shake and this is case sensitive. So as you can see N is capital and S is capital and I have this underscore between my name Naya shake. Now give a password, change this password. I'll just type in my password, whatever I want. Also change this email address, put in your own email address over here. So these were the most important step, the most important section in fact, admin account section, all these three options were very, very important. After that, at the bottom, you'll see this install button, click on that. So WordPress is getting installed on your domain name. It will take few seconds. Just don't worry. As I said you, it took few seconds. Now we get two different links. Okay, two different URLs. The first one is your domain URL or your website URL. And the second one is your administrative URL or your dashboard URL. Okay, so let's click on the second one. And let's cut all these things now. Okay guys, congratulations, we have successfully installed WordPress on our website and as you can see, this is your dashboard. This is a really simple dashboard. I'll explain you everything. Don't worry. And also, if you notice, we have this SSL certificate, which really, which is really amazing. Now at the left hand side, you have some options and this is the main section. The first thing that you have to do is delete all the default sex things. For example, by default, you will have some plugins and themes installed. We have to delete all of them. So from the left hand side, you'll see this option which says plugins. Click on plugins. As I said you earlier guys, we have two different plugins which is already installed. We don't need these things now. So you can just delete it. You can just select this option. Okay, if you click on this, it will select everything. And from the bulk action, click on delete or select delete and click on apply. Click on OK. So both the plugins are deleted. And for those of you, you guys who, who are new to WordPress, plugin is nothing but a source to improve the or to add or expand the functionality of your website. 
For example, we are creating an LMS website. By default, WordPress is not made for LMS websites, but we can use different plugins to make our website an LMS website. Or if you want to create an e-commerce website like Amazon.com, then you can use different plugins. For example, there is a very specific plugin which is called WooCommerce. You can use WooCommerce to convert your normal website, normal WordPress website into a, you know, e-commerce website. So that is what a plugin does. It expands the functionality of your website. You can do a lot of things using different plugins. Fine. Now, what do you have to do after deleting all the plugins? We have to delete the extra themes. So from the left hand side, again, you will see this option which says appearances. Click on that. Here, as you can see, we have three different themes. Now, again, if you don't know what a theme is, theme in very simple term is just the design of your website. If you want to change the design of your website, you use a different theme. The better and more robust your theme is, the more better and beautiful your website will be. So we'll, we don't want to use any one of these crappy themes. We'll just delete them. So select this thing and click on delete. Again, select this theme click on delete over here. Now if you want to see how your website is looking at present, you can hover over here. You'll get this option visit site, open this link in a new tab. So this is how your website should look. Now we don't want our website to look like this. We want our website to look something amazing like this. So for this, we need a theme. Okay, so we'll have to install a new theme. So to get that theme, what you can do, you can open a new tab and type in blogdo.com slash WPLMS. Now this link is also given in the video description below. So you can just check that link. Okay. You can click on that link. It will redirect you to this page. Now this is the number one LMS theme on theme forest. There is no doubt that this theme is the best and the most amazing theme for LMS on theme forest on or on any other platform. I haven't found any theme better than this one. Okay, this is the most selling LMS theme. It has got more than around 17,000 sales. The rating is also very good 4.52 rating and more than 1200 people have rated this theme. You can see all those different features over here. We get so many pre-built designs and demos. We also get a lot of premium plugins for free. For example, we get Visual Composer, which is the most selling visual builder or the page builder for WordPress. We get Layer Slider, Slider Revolution, which is a very beautiful plugin for creating different sliders. So we get all these things. We get one, uh, you know, plugins worth $130 for free with this theme. So you can just click on this button, which is over here. Let's see. You can just click on this button, add to cart or buy now, and you can purchase this theme. Now I won't do that because I have already purchased this theme. Once you purchase that theme, you will get this zip file. Okay, so this is how your zip file should look. In fact, it will, uh, it will say something else. I have renamed this file. It will say something like theme forest 6567, something like that. So if you open this zip file, we'll have, we'll have a lot of options, for example, you have your you know different options like demo wps and all these options now you have to select this one wp lms and you have to extract this file okay so once you extract this file you'll get this folder okay wp lms folder now we have to zip this file okay so what you can do you can right click on this you can click on add to archive you can select zip from here by the way i'm using this winrar much software that's why I'm able to do all these things okay so let me show you again you can just right click on this folder WPLMS folder click on add to archive select zip from here and click on ok once you do so you'll get a file like this now this is the file that we have to upload okay so this is 28 MB or around 30 MB file now there is a problem over here now let me explain you that first when you hover over this media and click on add new, you'll see over here that the maximum upload file size is 2 MB. 
now the file size that we need to install or we need to upload which is the theme file is 30 mb and here the maximum upload file size is only 2 mb so first we will have to increase the upload file size okay now i have shown this thing i have created a short video uh, explaining this issue and how to resolve this and uh, if for if you have used uh, and if you have watched that video that's good but if you haven't then let me explain you we have to use filezilla for this and if you don't know how to use filezilla again let me show you let me open my channel and let me show you that video okay so this is my channel if you see over here okay let me show you first you will see few videos so here first if you don't know how to use filezilla you can watch this video how to set up filezilla ftp server and after that you can watch this video it will help you to remove this error okay so i'll show you how to do this thing how to remove this error but first if you don't know how to set up filezilla you should watch this video it is a very short video around six minutes long video you can watch that it will solve your problem okay so let's open filezilla from here once you open filezilla you'll see all the files which is there on your server and if you see over here i am using this subdomain lms.2.nayashik.com so here I have to find that folder. Here it is lms2.nayashik.com. Open this folder. In that folder, you'll see a file called .htaccess. Now you have to change something on that file, okay? So what you can do, you can just drag this file, select this file and drag it on your desktop, on your desktop. And if you don't, if you're not sure whether your desktop is selected or not, you can select your desktop from here, okay? Here it is. Here is your desktop. You select your desktop. Now you have the desktop over here. You can just drag this dot .htaccess on your desktop. Okay, just drag it from right to left. Okay, here it says the transfer is finished. Now what you have to do, you have to open this thing. You have to open this file. Okay, I am using a file editor or text editor which is called Sublime Text. So that's why I am, I am able to open it very easily. Okay, you have to, once you open this thing, you have to paste something over here. So in order to get those, what whatever you have to paste, you just have to go to blogdo.com. I'll give all these links in the video description below. Just don't worry, okay? And if you're having any issue, you can just, you know, text me. You can leave a comment. I'll be more than happy to help you guys. Now, this is the link, okay? I'll give this link in the video description below. Just don't worry. Once you click uh, come to this link, you'll see at the bottom there are few lines of codes. Now you have to copy these codes. Just copy it and paste it over here. Okay. Once you paste the code, just press Ctrl S to save the file and cancel this thing. Okay. Now you can just get rid of all these things. Once you save all the file, just make sure to refresh your desktop from here. You just right click and refresh. Then again, drag this .htaccess file to your web server. It will ask you to overwrite the file. Okay, just select overwrite and click on OK. Okay, it says transfer finished. Now let's see whether the problem is solved or not. Earlier it was 2 MB. Let's refresh and see the change. Now as you can see, it says 64 MB. Now we can upload any file up to 64 MB. So that is awesome. So again, click on appearances, click on add new, click on upload theme. Now we have to choose this file. Okay. We have to select this file, this file, WP LMS file, which we extracted. So come back over here, click on choose file. And here it is WP LMS. This is the file WP LMS. Select this, click on open and click on install. Now, if you want, if you, you can see your progress in the you know, bottom left corner, if you're using Google Chrome, it is 9, 10% something. It will take some time. So I'll pause this video and I'll come back when the installation or the upload uploading of the file is finished. Okay guys, so as you can see over here, the installation is complete. We have successfully installed the theme. Now it's time to activate the theme. So just click on this activate link. Okay, once you click on that link, you will get this setup, this quick setup. Now, first, what you have to do, we have to just follow this setup. Click on let's go. Okay, if you don't follow this setup or if you don't get this option, just type in this thing. Okay, just type in your website name, 
forward slash wp admin forward slash themes dot php question mark page is equal to wp lms dash setup okay you will get it don't worry but for some reason if you don't get this setup just click on this link or there is another option i'll show you later on of if you don't get this setup okay so first let's see how to set up everything let's click on let's go this is a very important setup it's a quick setup it will set up a lot of pages and everything for you you don't have to create those pages it will you know install many plugins and many different things for you you don't have to do it manually it will do everything automatically okay so we we want to select visual composer because we want that we don't have to select this events drives discussion forums game we can select this thing gamification and points we can select membership custom batches multiple instructor per page and just leave uh, these things video conferencing and h5p these are not required okay so let's see what all things which uh, we have marked we have marked the lms we have marked the e-commerce slider visual composer gamification and points membership custom batches multiple instructors per page okay now click on continue okay now it will install all these plugins for you so click on continue again now again it will take some time to install all these plugins i think it is like 20 15 20 plugins so again i'll have to pause this video until all the plugins is installed because it is going to take and around 5 10 minutes i guess okay so i'll pause this video once everything is done once all the plugins are installed and activated i'll come back okay guys so as you can see all the plugins are successfully installed and we are on the third option which is the pages option now this is the most important thing and this is the main reason why i prefer this quick page setup because it will set up a lot of important important pages that we require for example the purse course page the create page uh, the create course page and all those kind of pages you know very very important the directory pages registration pages and so on so just click on continue now here you have to select any one of this style now it is not uh, you know very important to select anything because it won't affect your website in any manner but still i would select recommend you to select the second style so select the second one scroll down and click on continue now here we have the content option whether you want to install the default or the demo content now make sure you don't do anything over here we don't have to install or update you know we don't have to install any demo content so what we'll do we'll click on this option this time it says skip this step so click on that option this time okay very very important now you can select any theme skin i you can select default minimal elegant okay it doesn't actually matter and you can change these things later on so i'm selecting elegant and click on continue fine so all the uh, things are done the main quick setup is done you can view your website by clicking on this button so i'll click on this button let's see how our website looks at present okay so this is how our website is looking at present earlier it was looking like this so at least it is looking much better now we have to do some more settings so come back over here and at the bottom you'll see this link which says return to the wordpress dashboard click on that link okay so we are back on our dashboard now we get a lot of messages over here now let's cut all those messages except few okay we don't want all these things over here okay cut this also just leave this one okay uh, the woocommerce one because we'll have we'll again have to set up woocommerce now this was the quick setup for theme and this will be a quick setup for WooCommerce, the main plugin that will make our you know website e-commerce friendly. Okay, so don't cut these things, we'll need this thing. Now let's start creating the most important thing because the most important thing on this website is the courses itself. Okay, so the courses are the most important thing. So let's open any one of this course and let's see how to go and how to do anything further let's decide what to do further 
okay so this is how a single course looks like okay we have this course we have the course description and so on and after that we have different sections and we have different lectures over here so what we'll do we'll first create different lectures then we'll create the course and after that we'll have to create a product so that we can link the course with the product so that we can get this option of $20 you know so that people can come and they can purchase that course any course they want and we can earn some money okay so first let's start creating lectures so come back to your dashboard now at the left hand side you'll see this option the LMS option hover LMS and click on all units now as you can see over here we don't have any lectures or any units at present it says no pages found so we have to create create a new one so click on add new you can also hover here which you know is at the top you have this plus new and you can select unit from here okay so it will do the same thing now we have to give it a title first let's open a single a uh, single lecture and see how it looks click on get started with marketing okay so this is how a single lecture looks okay we have some text we have a video and we also have a YouTube video link over here so this is the title of the lecture this is the subtitle of the lecture and this is the thumbnail which is not important okay so first here at the top we have to put in the title okay so this is the title get started with marketing let's copy and let's create a very similar lecture like this okay so what i'll do i'll copy the same title and paste it over here now here don't think that the subtitle will come here the short description and all the main content will come okay so for example here we, this is the content what is marketing so we can copy this thing the content and we can paste it over here you can just type anything and you have all this option to make it bold italic if you want bulleted list if you want more option you can click on this button which says toggle toolbar it will give you some more options okay if you want to change the text color and so on you can select this after that as you can see we have a video so what you can do i'll do is i'll click on add media i'll upload a file any video file which you want to upload the lecture file so what i'll do is i'll upload this file this video and click on open as you can see it is getting uploaded it is around 6 mb so you can upload any video file size up to 64 mb okay and make sure your uh, lectures are short like 10 20 minutes long so that you know you can uh, create short lectures and don't make one hour two hour long lectures now select this thing and click on insert into page now as you can see the video is embedded over here so this will look something like this which we have on our demo website so we have the content and after that again we have some text or some content so i'll just copy it from here and paste it below this one and after that we can put in any video link as well like it has given a youtube link now what i'll do is i'll open my youtube channel and copy any one of the video link and paste it over here so let's select the very latest one or maybe the most popular one how to make an e-commerce website so copy this link and paste it over here okay as you can see it has all automatically converted into a embedded video fine now from the format at the right hand side you will see this format make sure standard is selected okay now scroll down you have unit description over here now what is this description unit description if you scroll at the top you will see this thing now this is what a unit description is the short description about this lecture or tagline of this lecture so you can paste this thing over here now what is this type of lecture or what is the type of unit so this is a video unit because we have uploaded a video file as you can see over here so this is a video unit uh, whether you want to make this a free unit now basically how it works if you see over here let's go to the main course page so that you can understand so this is the course main course page okay 
so what we do is generally we create we make one lecture as free lecture so that anyone can watch that video and decide whether to purchase this code course or not so what we can do we can make this thing free but we don't we won't repeat this for all the rest of the lectures this is only for the introduction lecture so that user can understand about the course now we have to put in the duration of the course for example the video which we uploaded was 10 minutes long so i'll put 10 and i'll select minutes from here now leave these things unit forum and connect assignments just leave those and uh, rest everything is fine you don't have to put any tags or featured image it will work without that okay after doing all these changes all these things just click on publish fine so it says uh, it is done the first we have successfully created our first lecture let's view this post let's see how it looks okay so as you can see this is how it is looking we have the video we have this embedded video and all this course thing is over here now the design is little bit different if you see over here the title subtitle is here at the top okay and here uh, it is a little bit different okay so i'll show you how to change the design but if you like this design if you think this design is better than this one then you can just do you just you can just skip that step but i'll show you how to change the design first let's see let's create one more course or one more lecture so that we have something to put in you know our course because we don't want our course to just have one introduction lecture we want something else or something more so just click on add new and let's open another lecture okay so i'm on my demo website right now and what i'll do is i'll open another lecture now i cannot open another lecture because i am not logged in okay now if i want to use if i want to see this lecture either i have to purchase this course or i have to log in because i am the uh, admin so i can view any lecture okay so what i'll do i'll log in over here so that we can see the lecture okay as you can see i have successfully logged into the demo website now let me go to that course so that I can you know, see the next lecture and we can create a very similar lecture. Now, now I can click on this lecture, software testing. Now let's create a very similar lecture like this one. So we have this add new unit over here. This is the title software testing. I'll do it very fast. So don't worry, you don't have to waste your time. We can copy any content from here paste it over here again we can upload a video new lecture so what i'll do i'll do i won't upload a new one i'll just use the same video click on insert into page scroll down and let's give it a description this is a description copy this paste it over here type of the lecture it is also a video lecture and this time we will make it hide okay so this is not a free unit and duration suppose it is 25 minutes long so we'll put 25 rest everything is fine just click on publish fine so we have successfully created two different lectures now if you see over here let's go back and if this in the second section we also have a quiz okay if you open this thing the software quiz we also have a quiz now this uh, i have already played this quiz that's why it says time remaining ended uh, so we can replay this quiz as you can see we have created a quiz we have some you know text for the quiz and we have around seven eight questions over here so let's create this quiz so that you know we can also allow the users who are creating courses on our website to create quizzes now this makes uh, the course very interesting and we have this quiz option on udemy as well so to create a quiz first we'll have to create the questions for the quiz then we'll you know uh, arrange all those questions into one single quiz and we'll add that quiz in the course if you don't understand don't worry just follow me okay so we are done with the lectures now to add new questions you'll again see at the left hand side we have all questions click on all questions now again if you see it says no pages found we don't have anything uh, over here we'll have to create something new okay so click on add new 
again to add a new question you can just hover over here and click on question it will add a new question now here you have to put give it a title okay you don't have to put in the question over here okay you just have to give it a title for example we are creating a course for software development or software training so what i'll do i'll just type in software okay the spelling software training question one or q1 just q1 okay so this will be the title and here you have to put in the question okay for example let's put a question very stupid question what is the capital of india fine this has nothing to do with software training but just for sake of tutorial purposes now what type of question do you want okay multiple choice sort answer fill in the blanks so i'll select multiple choice and click on add more so the first option let's put in mumbai second option maybe chennai third option maybe delhi okay this is the right answer and the fourth option let's put goa okay so the right answer is delhi delhi is the capital of india so here we have to put in the correct answer which is th number three over here so i'll put in number three okay you can type something for answer hint and uh, if you, if it is something to be explained then you can explain the answer over here okay for example if it is some question some maths question then you can explain it like how why how did you arrive to that answer you can explain it over here once you're done you can just uh, scroll at the top and click on publish you can add a tag it will help you to you know identify and sort out different type of questions for example for this you can add a tag like software something like that okay so as you can see one tag is added click on publish okay so we have successfully added one question now let me quickly add another question just so that we have at least two questions in our quiz now click on add new again now again in the title i'll type in software training q2 question 2 and i'll just type in question very quickly so that i don't want to show the same step again multiple choice add more i'll just type in wrong over here so this is the wrong answer again the wrong answer again now here i will put in the right answer and the fourth one will be the wrong answer okay now i just noticed that uh, in the pre previous one also the third one was answer so what i'll do i'll drag this thing to the first okay now the first one will be the right answer so in the current correct answer box i'll type in one because the first option the one option is the right answer again you can put in answer hit hint and, and answer explanation if you want you can give a question tag if you want and click on publish so we have two different questions now now we can create a quiz and add these two questions over there so from the right hand side you will see all quizzes click on all quizzes we don't have any quiz already so it's it says no pages found let's add a new quiz so click on add new button now you can put the title over here now if you see over here this is the title the software quiz okay so i'll put the same title the software quiz now this is the thing uh, which will show if whatever you type in over here in this main box it will show up over here for example i have some dummy text over here check your answers depending on how the quiz is configured and so on so you can type these type of things over here what i have done is i have created a dummy file if you let me show you course statements okay i have given actually i have given a link in the video description below if you click on that link you can download all the images videos and these files whatever i have used in the download everything for free okay so you can just go ahead and download everything for free whatever i have used in the website in the demo website okay whether it be files images videos audios anything for example here as you can see you can you'll also find this uh, document in that link okay everything for free so we have something i have already given some 
dummy text you can just copy the if you don't know what to put in over here if you have not decided anything you can copy and use these things okay let me copy this one checking your answers let me copy and paste it over here fine now quiz subtitle now this is the quiz subtitle here it says the final software quiz for course assessment you can put any subtitle just paste it over here connected course now we will not get any options because we haven't created any course now quiz duration how much time do you want to give the student to solve this quiz so let's say we want them to you know get 10 minutes so we can put 10 and we can select minutes from here auto evaluate answer do you want the system to automatically evaluate and check the answers if yes then make sure to make these things show number of extra quiz retakes how many times a user can retake the quiz so suppose if you you want the user to retake the quiz three times you can put three or you can just put one or zero whatever you want post quiz message after the user has finished the quiz what message should appear so i have a thing for that also as you can see post quiz message you can copy this thing if you want okay your quiz has been submitted and is under evaluation checking your answer how to check your answer and so on now let's copy this thing let's paste it over here add check answer switch dynamic switch quiz you can just leave these things and at the bottom you'll see quiz questions now here we have to add the questions click on add more button now select the file now here search for the question for example if you remember the question was software question 1 and 2 now here it is software training question 1 again click on add more if you want to add some more questions and let's add the second question software training question 2 and you can give marks to this question for example for first question i want to give 10 marks and for second question i want to give 5 marks so i can just type in 5 over here and 10 over here and you can see automatically it will show you the total marks for the quiz which is 15 marks fine now let's scroll up okay you can select the type of the quiz now this will help you to you know distinguish different for example if you hundred of people are creating different courses then it will help you to distinguish and you know categorize different kind of quizzes for example you can add a new type and just add in software okay so this is the quiz or all the quizzes related to software will come under this category okay so they'll select this type software type now click on publish okay guys so we have created two different lectures and one quiz now we can create the course but before that i want to create a product because you know what happens is if you create a course you cannot put any price to that course by default you cannot earn money from that for that first we'll have to set up woocommerce because woocommerce allows us you know to make our website e-commerce okay e-commerce friendly so that you can user can buy something they can make a purchase and so on so for that first we'll have to set up woocommerce so here is the link that's why i said you not to skip this setup click on this option which says run the setup wizard now if you don't get this option you can just type in your domain name slash wp admin slash admin dot php question mark page is equal to wc dash setup okay now this is the first option store setup where is your store based what is the location of your store so here you have to you know type in this name of your state not the name of your country for example my state name is maharashtra which is in india so I'll, i have typed in maharashtra now as you can see it says india maharashtra now here you have to type in the store address so i'll just type in mumbai now you can choose any currency just click on over here and type in the name of the currency for example if you want united states dollar then you can select this one united states dollar now you can select this option i want to i plan to sell both physical 
and digital products now the product which we are selling is digital product not physical so if you want to sell both kind of product you can select both or at least select this one digital products okay now click on let's go now we have to set up paypal but don't do anything over here just le let everything uh, as it is we'll see these things later on click on continue now here just make all these things off because we don't need any shipping options we are not shipping any product this is not any you know tangible product so click on continue fine now skip this step at the final step it will ask you to create a product but we don't want to create any product right now okay so what you can do we can click on this link which is at the bottom return to your dashboard click on that link first we'll complete the woocommerce integration and after that we'll also see how to create coupons then we'll create a product fine so from the left hand side you will see we get two more options now after installing woocommerce we get this woocommerce option and products option option so first hover woocommerce and click on settings now here you'll see all the option related to e-commerce so your store location your selling location shipping location and so on if you want to enable taxes you can just tick mark this one okay you can change the currency and so on from here now the main option that i want to go to is checkout option so click on checkout because now we have to enable paypal so that user can pay through paypal and we can receive the payment and make sure you tick mark this thing enable use of coupons because we are going to enable coupons okay now also tick mark this thing force secure uh, checkout but if you don't have this socket this secure socket don't make this thing on okay because to make this thing on you must have this ssl certificate okay which is this so we have but if you don't have this if you are not using tmd if you are using some other hosting company don't make this thing on fine so make sure the cart page cart is selected checkout page checkout is selected and click on save changes now we have to enable paypal so click on paypal the last option from here and tick mark enable paypal standard and enter your paypal email address over here so i'm entering my paypal email address and you can change the title what it should say paypal and you can also change the title descrip uh, the description okay don't tick mark any of these things just come at the bottom and now we have to enter the api username password and signature now let me t show you how you can get this let's cut this thing now go to paypal.com first of all now from the left hand side you'll see something called selling preferences under selling tools click on selling preferences fine now we'll get more options here we have api access and besides that you have this update link click on that update link now go at the bottom you will see where is that gone okay let me sh okay this is the one nvp slash soap api integration the classic option as you can see in the bracket it says classic option now we have to click on this link which says manage api credentials now once you click on this you'll get your username password and signature now suppose you want to you want your username you can just click on this show button it will show your username you can just copy it from here and paste it under api username then you can uh, click on this show password copy your password from here paste it over here then after that you can click on show signature copy your signature from here and paste it over here click on save changes okay so this will enable paypal okay so we can use paypal now to make payment and to accept payment from the user now let's see how to create coupons so that user we can you know use coupons to promote our website and the user we who are creating courses on our website they can also use coupons to promote their courses 
So to create a coupon from the left hand side, you'll see WooCommerce and under WooCommerce, we have coupons. So click on coupons. Okay, we don't have any coupons. So first we'll have to add one, click on add coupon. Now we can put in any coupon name. Okay, so this is the exact text that user has to create type to get the discount. For example, you can type in uh, like 10 off to give 10% to give off. Okay, so numeric 10 and off. Now you can put in any description and this is optional. For example, this code gives 10% discount, something like that. Okay, 10% discount on any course. Fine. Now what kind of discount do you want to give? Okay, so you have to select the discount type, percentage discount, fixed card discount, free fixed product discount. So if you want to give a very specific price, a fixed price like $10, then you can select fixed product discount and if you want to give a discount a specific discount for the cart discount now cart discount is different for example if the user has saved 10 different courses on the cart and if they use this code for it to get a specific amount of discount or specific percentage of discount then suppose a user has saved 10 different courses worth hundred dollars each so that will be around hundred uh, around thousand dollars and if you're giving 10 percent discount then he will get hundred dollar discount so make sure you understand these things first so i'm selecting the simple percentage discount and i'm putting 10 percent over here because the coupon says 10 off so basically that means it will give 10 percent off you can also set an expiry date to this coupon for example let's select uh, april 1st to make them april fools okay allow free shipping not required because we are not shipping anything usage restrictions very important now minimum spend you have to select the minimum amount the user has to spend to get this discount for example you can select ten dollars maximum spend so for example the user will not get this discount if the amount is more than five hundred dollars something like that okay you can use this thing you can understand and set according to your needs individual use only check this box if the coupon cannot be used in conjunction with other coupon very important because you don't want user to be using 10 different coupons one for 20 20 percent discount one for 10 percent discount and ultimately give getting the product for free so make sure make sure this thing is tick marked Exclude sale products. Yes, we don't want to exclude sale products because if we are giving sales, then we don't need, uh, we don't want the user to get more extra discount on those sale, sales product. Now, if you want to select only specific product for discount, you can just type in the product name and you'll select that product and you can give you know discount only on those specific product or you can you know exclude specific product you can include specific product categories or exclude categories from here now once you are done click on usage limits the last option usage limit per coupon okay so how many times the the coupon can be used once it expires for example 100 times only the first 100 people who use this coupon uh, can use it okay limit usage to x items okay limit usage per user so i'll put in just one okay so a user can uh, use this coupon only one time now once you're done just click on publish okay so we have also created a coupon now let's create a product so that we can link it with the course so to create a product from the left hand side, you'll see these products, how are products and click on add new. Okay, now you can put in the product name over here. Now let me show you how a product looks. Let's come back. This is our demo website again, I'm saying you. Okay, so this is the course. And if you wanna see the product, let me show you product software training. Okay, so this is the product. The user will, when the user will add the product and when the user is going to check out, he'll see something like this. So there is an image and as you can see in this product, this course, this software training course is uh, affiliated. Okay. So once the purchase, once the user purchases this digital product, he'll get this course fine. 
so this is how a course looks like now uh, this is how product looks like a product will be very very simple don't worry okay so just copy this title from here paste in over here short description about this course which will show up at the bottom as you can see over here copy this paste it over here now we can add a category for the product for example over here it says product categories you can add new category suppose you can add a category called technology for this okay because it is technology related associated course we haven't created any course so we cannot associate this product with any course but after this we'll create a course and we'll link both the course and product so don't worry and just make make sure subscription is hidden because if you make uh, if you make this thing show it will be on and if you on the subscription thing every month the user will be charged us uh, the amount whatever amount you're going to set okay so we don't want that we want a single product one time one time price okay now here make sure simple product is selected and also virtual is selected because this is not a regular product this is just a simple virtual product now what is the regular price for example it is fifty dollars so we can put in fifty dollars and we can leave everything that's why i said it's a real simple product we just have to select simple virtual and you have to give it a, give it a price tag of fifty dollars or whatever you want now let's add a product image so click on set product image now i already have an image so i'll upload that Again, this image is also given in the file. Let me first see the image. Okay, if you download the file, the file is given in the video description below. Click on that link. You can download the file and in that file, you'll get all the images, videos, codes, CSS, whatever I have used in my website, you'll get all those things for free. So in that, you'll also get this file or this folder, which is which says images if you use that. Here it is course image. You can select this thing, click on open. Now we can set this image as the course image. Click on set product image. Fine. Now click on publish. With this we have created a product. Now only thing left before creating a course is a certificate. Okay, rest everything is done. Okay, to create all the prerequisites to create a course is done except for certificate. So let's complete that as well. Okay, so to create a certificate, you can again hover over LMS and click on certificate templates. We don't have any templates. We'll have to add a new one. So click on add new. Now you can give it any title you want. For example, you can give it like a, a certificate for, um, for software training, anything like that. Okay or you can just give it a title like template one because a uh, course name and student's name everything will be auto uh, automatically generated i'll show you how okay now here you have to put in the main content of the certificate now again if you see if you download the file which is given in the video description below in that file you will get a file which is called certificate layout if you open that i have a very a simple layout for you you can use this layout you can just copy everything from here and paste it over here and now select everything and make it center align and let's make increase the size so select the first two things the first one is certificate awarded to and the second one is the short code for student name okay so what it says this certificate is awarded to the student name now name of the student will automatically be generated instead of this short code okay and if you want to get these short codes then you can just scroll at the bottom and you'll see all those different short codes okay like certificate code certificate completion date certificate student photo and you can use these things to design a certificate fine for the successful completion of course and then we have the short code for certificate course here the name of the course will be retyped okay now what i'll do i'll select the first two and instead of paragraph i want heading one so i want the first two things to be very big then after that i have these two things now i'll select these and i'll select heading two then marks i'll select heading three let me select that heading three 
and after that we have the certificate code so this can be paragraph simple paragraph paragraph that is fine now what i want to do is i want to add the logo at the top okay maybe the university logo or some logo so what you can do is you can click on add media and you can upload the logo click on upload file now what i'll do if you see on the demo on the demo website on the home page we have a lot of logos which we have used we can use any one of them if you see at the bottom as you can see we have a lot of logos over here let's use any one of these click on select files okay let's upload any one of these let's select this one click on open click on insert into post now as you can see we have this thing over here and everything is center aligned now at the bottom you have background image if you want to give a background image or pattern you can select that image make sure this thing is on this thing is set to show enable print and pdf very important now we can uh, you know give a certificate with if you want the certificate height and width to be very specific you can select that i'm using 750 by 750 okay you can use any size you can give a custom class and custom css to design this certificate in a much better way okay if you want you can do that now once you're done click on publish with this we have also completed and created a beautiful certificate a very simple and beautiful certificate now we can easily create our course so let's do that let's do the most important thing of creating a course so again under lms click on all courses and we won't have any course it will be empty as i said you it's all empty we don't have any course we'll have to create a new one so click on add new now again let's open that course and let's create a very similar course as you can see over here the title is software training we can copy this title we can paste it over here after that we have this thing okay this is some something about the course okay the content of the course not the content but you know short description or uh, about the course what you will learn in this course what are the features of the course and so on you can type everything over here then we have the course setting sidebar you can select any sidebar okay total duration of course for example the course is total of maybe eight hours then you can put in eight and parameter you can select hours total number of students in course okay so you can just leave this thing to zero or if uh, suppose 10 students have already taken this course you can put 10 over here and after that just leave all these things just don't make any one of this on okay but there are some options that you might consider making on like show unit content in curriculum okay this is basically for offline course if you want to make this course offline you can do so hide course button after subscription display course progress on home page you can make this thing on time based course progress you can make this thing on as well it's all up to you okay auto evaluation if you want to um, make auto evaluation you can make this thing on po post course review from home course home you can make this thing on as well now course start date you can set the today's date whatever uh, date you have on that day maximum students allowed in course so you can set a maximum students if you want i don't think you would uh, you know recommend that then we have excellence badge you can select any badge image so you'll have this image by default on your computer on your website select this image click on select so this is the excellent badge image and now what is the percentage uh, required for this badge for example anyone getting at least 75 or above percentage will get this badge okay and you can give a title to this badge for example this is related to software then we can give a title like software champ something like that okay completion certificate do you want to give certificates on completion yes now we have to select the template and we have recently created a template and we have named it template one so we can select that one it is searching here it is template one select this one passing percentage we will select 40 percentage as the passing percentage and leave all these things come at the bottom 
come to this option which says course curriculum and first add a new section as you can see over here there are two different sections introduction and advanced computing now let's first add the first section introduction okay here it is click on add new section and type in introduction over here and under introduction we can add a course or we can add a lecture so to add a lecture click on add unit now here search for that uh, unit or search for that lecture okay so that was i guess introduction to something like that no okay it was getting started with marketing so let's type in getting started with okay here it is getting started with marketing now we can add another section and let's give it a title of advanced computing and we can add a quiz in that okay so let's click on add quiz and we have created a quiz that was i guess software quiz we have named it software quiz here it is and we can drag this thing over here okay once you save everything you can drag everything so just leave this thing for now if you want you can have a prerequisite course over here for example if a user can take this course only if they have taken some basic for example this is required you know this thing will be useful when you have an advanced course different and a basic course different so suppose you're creating this advanced course and you have already created a basic course so you might require user to complete the basic course first to get this to get into this course okay so you can also do that number of retakes a user can take on the course you can set this to anything for example one or two it's all up to you you can set this to zero to make it disable now if you want to give any instruction to the uh, user to the student you can have it over here and you can also have a message after course completion so i have a simple thing for this course completion message you can just copy this okay it's still here copy it paste it over here fine if you want to make this course free you can select this thing you can make it free but i don't want to make it free you can, if you want to make this first section free you can select yes okay i don't want any to do anything now we have to associate this course with a product so we have successfully or recently created a product we have to search for that product uh, that was software training so search for software training you'll get this product okay and after that everything is fine let's see some more option come at the top at the right hand side you have this featured image click on set featured image let's select this image course image set featured image okay course category you can again give it a category anything you want like technology add new category and click on publish okay guys so with this we have created our first course let's see how it looks let's view this post leave view this course in a new tab open this link in a new tab okay guys so this is how it looks as you can see 50 dollars uh, the title is over all these things when we have the curriculum over here when you click on curriculum we have introduction advanced computing and so on but again if you see and if you notice the design is quite different from the demo website so let's fix that to do so come back to your dashboard and click on customize button if you don't see customize option hover appearances and click on customize the second option now here we have to change the header style okay as you can see the header style over here is different so first let's change the header go to header instead of header style default select transparent and login style select anything you want i'm selecting full screen okay and click on publish now again come back and we have layouts okay so we have different layouts like theme layout directly layout in the directory layout select the second one in the profile layout also select the second one group layout also second one and in the course layout which is this one we have to say uh, change this one 
again select this second one okay you have different layouts you can select any one of these you can select one you can publish and you can see the changes then you can select next to layout and you can see whatever you like the best you can select that one i am selecting all those things which i have selected in the demo website okay so in the course layout i have selected this second one select that click on publish now let's refresh this page and let's see how it looks so as you can see now it looks exactly the same exactly same like the demo website as you can see over here same website the only difference which i see at present is that we don't have the curriculum shown over here okay in the demo website you after the content you have the curriculum shown over here but we don't have it over here so after this we have to do that so once you do you can just exit out now to show curriculum over here to show our lectures over here like we have on udemy what you can do is you can go to your dashboard and from the left hand side you'll see wp lms hover wp lms and select course manager now make sure uh, you have this course status page selected in this take this course page section and edit course page is selected in the connect edit course page section okay after that maintain accurate student count yes tab style course layout make this thing yes now after you do this thing a uh, yes it will change the design from here okay disable right click if you want you can select that course status templates full screen admin approval for course yes require approval because we don't want anyone you know uploading anything and just getting approved we what we want whatever they upload whatever they you know, upload on the website first we want to check whether that is legit and after that we can approve that okay you have some more options you can select these things you can you know see these options whatever you like but i have i these options were important after that you can see all these options come at the bottom now we have default course block style select the third one this is this style which i have selected now after that we have show related courses at the end of single course yes because here if you see at the end we have this related courses select make this thing yes and click on save changes now come back to your website refresh and we should see the changes now as you can see we have our curriculum over here and we don't have any related course because we have only one course that's why we don't see anything at the bottom but we are successfully done creating the course and changing the design similar to the uh, the demo website now the most important thing is done which is creating the course and how you can create a course or something now after this for, we'll have to start creating our website and designing our website for example if you go to your home page let's see how it looks okay as you can see this is how it looks but we have to change this and we have uh, and make it something like the demo website let's see the home page for the demo website okay we have to make it something amazing like this so let's start doing this but before this i need some rest uh, but don't worry you guys won't be disappointed because you'll see a continue video okay i need some rest after that i'll continue welcome back guys now let's start creating the home page so as you can see at the top we have this section this is actually a slider so we have created this using the slider revolution so let's first create this section so to do so come back to your dashboard and at the left hand side at the bottom you'll see something called slider revolution click on that fine so first we'll have to create a new slider so click on this button which says new slider okay so as you can see the first it is content source so you can select different type of slider i would recommend you in fact you have to select this one the first one which is default slider the second one is just to give a title so we can give it any title for example let's name it slider one okay here also slider one fine after that we have to select the type of slider standard slider hero scene or carousel so this is a standard slider which we have created over here so we'll select standard slider from here then we have the layout 
So this is not the auto layout, it is a full width layout. As you can see, this is a full width slider. After that, we have to select the dimension. Now, as you can see, it is not a very big slider in terms of height. Okay, as you can see, the height is not full width. It is not till the bottom, it is just till over here. So we'll have to decrease the height. The default height is 868, let's make it 600. Okay, as you can see now it it fits better. Now this is the height for laptop. So if you want, you can have this the height or if you wanna change, you can just make this on. And let's change this to 500. Then this is the height for tablet. You just have to change the height, not this width. Width will be automatic, okay? Now let's make it 400. And for mobile, let's make it 300. Okay, so this is looking much better. Rest everything is fine. This is the only setting that we have to do. Just click on save setting over here. Okay, once you do so, you'll get this page where we have to edit the slider. So let's start editing it. First, you'll see there is an image in the background. So let's add that image. So we'll have to add a background image. So at the top in the main background section, select the first one and click on media library to upload a file click on upload files select files and let's select this file okay so you can download all these images for free there is a link given in the video description below you can click on that link and you can download everything all the files that i have used in the demo website so you should see something like this now there is a folder called slider Open that folder and you'll find this image over here, main banner. Select this image, click on open. Okay, so now click on insert. Now you should see something like this. Now we have a background image. Now we have to add some text on that image. So let's do that. Now hover this or click on this add layer. After that you have to select the type of layer. So we want to add a text. So select text and just enter the title for example here it is looking for something so let's type that now we have to adjust the size and all those things first thing that we have to do is adjust the font so font that i have used over here is railway so here you can uh, select any font you want so i'll click on over here and i'll type in railway r a l e w a y this is the font okay this font is loading now as you can see the font is changed now we can also change the font size line height font width and all these things so let's select the font size of 50 pixels and line height also of 50 pixels and we'll make it bolder so we'll select the font weight of 800 okay so it is 50 pixels height 50 pixel size and 800 for font weight so this is looking awesome okay you can place it anywhere you want by using your cursor if you want this thing to stay in the middle then you can click on this button align center and it will stay at the center this is very useful now let's see what we have next again we have some simple text over here it is quite smaller but we'll use the same technique it says using wordpress powered search so let's add that again click on add layer text or html and let's type that it says using wordpress powered search so here it is here is our text let's put it over here let's make it center align first now we'll have to change some setting first we want the same font which is railway so i'll search for railway over here now if you see over here this font is quite smaller the weight is also quite less and it has some gap okay font uh, gap between the text so let's add that let's decrease the size to 13 pixels and let's keep the line height to maybe 20 pixels and also decrease or maybe increase the font weight to 500 now this looks really weird so we'll have to add some spacing between the letters so here you'll see letter spacing now here just put in 5 pixels okay now this looks much better now you can adjust this text anywhere you want and just to make it center click on this button now this will stay at in the center of this slider now it's time to add this form so again come back over here and we'll use the same layer text or html because it says you can use text and you can also use html so select that 
and instead of this we have to paste in some code over here so if you see the file which you get in the video description below you will see a file which, is, which says CSS when you open this file you it will look something like this so first you will have to copy this code okay the first line of code copy till the end okay now come back over here and paste in the code over here okay so you will get this form like this now you have to place it anywhere you want for example let's keep everything a bit down and let's make everything center line so select this click on that select this one click on this fine so this is looking better now after doing this first let's save the settings so that you don't miss any settings so we are done creating the main thing now it's time to add some animation and add some animation timing so if you see over here there is some timing for example first the background comes then after one second this title comes you know what i'm talking about you know you have animation first this title comes then this thing comes and it it has some animation like fade or scroll or something like that okay so let's do that first we'll set the timing so first what do you want to come so first we want this title to come okay now we have to decide the timing here it is the title one at the bottom so what i'll do i'll select this and click on this edit button and frame start when do you want this frame to start so i want this frame to start at one second so i'll type in thousand milliseconds and what should be the duration of the animation so i want the duration to be 1.5 seconds so i'll type in 1500 milliseconds and i'll click on this tick mark button now after that when it ends what should be the animation so again the timing you can decide you can again hover here and click on this edit button okay now duration you can select one second so thousand milliseconds now the second thing which is this one using wordpress powered search now we have to select this and we have to decide the timing so again i'll hover over here and click on this edit button now i want this one to start a little bit late so i'll select 1500 milliseconds which is 1.5 seconds and duration should be same 1.5 seconds so again 1500 milliseconds and end time will be same which is one second now if you are not able to see properly i would suggest you to watch this video in full hd because i always upload my videos in 1080p so i would recommend you to watch this video in 1080p and full screen so that you can see all the details now the form so select this form now this is the last one the form one so what i'll do i'll again hover over here and click on edit so i want this form to come at the end so i'll select two seconds okay so i want this form to appear at two seconds and i want the duration the animation duration to be 1.5 seconds and time will be same one second fine now click on this tick mark button so you if you want you can have a you know just a simple demo you can click on this play button as you can see okay let us see again as you can see first the title comes then this subtitle comes then we have the form let's again see okay first the title the subtitle and this one comes okay so this is working now we can change the animation if you want you can see it again okay title subtitle then the form fine now we have to change the animation by default everything is applied to fade you can change the animation so suppose you want to change the animation for this title you can select this title and here at the top you'll see animation click on animation as i said you by default fade in is selected now you can change this now there are so many different things for example let's select this one pop up smooth now as you can see the animation is totally changed now this is how it looks now if you want to change the animation for subtitle as well now you can select subtitle again go to animation and change this to anything you want so let me select this time okay letter fly from bottom let's select this one okay so this is how the animation is so you can set any animation to all these things i think this is enough now we can just click on save slide so we have successfully created 
this section okay we'll see how to use this section because we have just created it we haven't pasted it anywhere now what i'll do uh, instead of starting to create the home page first i'll create this section as well because this is also a slider this is also created using a uh, slider revolution this section so let's also make this section okay so again what we'll do we'll click on add slider all sliders now again we'll click on add new slider again make sure default slider is selected over here and you can give it any title okay so let's give it a title of slider 2 let's type in slider 2 over here here also slider 2 now standard slider slider layout again full width slider now here if you see this is much smaller than this one so this one was 600 pixels in height so let's change this height and let's decrease the height for this one so maybe i'll select 500 that would be better and everything is automatically say, uh, adjusted but again if you want to make some changes you can just make it on and change the size uh, the height or with whatever you want to make whatever you want to make some changes you can do that easily fine now let's click on save slide and let's start creating this slider as well so here also we have a very similar setting we have a image in the background we have a title subtitle and a call to action button so here we'll see how to add this button and how to link this and how to change the color of this text so let's do that come back to this dashboard again the first step is to set a background image so click on over here click on media library upload files select files and this time we'll have to select this one so select this click on open click on insert scroll down now as you can see we have this thing over here now the first thing that we'll have to add is this one starting online learning let's add this text so again click on add layer text let's type in starting online learning fine click on ok now we'll have to change the font family this time i'll select roboto which is a very good font now again the size of the font and height will have to change so if you see in the demo website this font is quite smaller and the next font the subtitle is quite bigger so first we'll have to set this one so it is let's set this to 15 pixels font size and 20 pixels font height and let's make it more bolder so let's select 700 okay this is looking much better bring it over here and make it center align now let's change the color of this font so here we have the color select this and you can select any color and you can play around with this color so let me make this something like this light blue click on ok so we have a beautiful color to this font now we can adjust it anywhere you want now the next font is this one enhance your skills with best online courses so let's add this as well click on add layer text or html and let's type in whatever we had over there enhance what was that enhance your skills with best okay okay so i'll keep uh, only this much because here if, if you see online courses is written on another line so we'll see how to do that first we will type only this section and we'll click on ok now again let's change the font family and this time we'll select roboto slab okay this is another font this is not roboto this is roboto slab so select that one and let's increase this font height to maybe 50 pixels and this to 55 pixels okay and uh, it is fine 400 is fine let's bring it over here okay if you want you can change this color to black or anything you want okay let's see okay you can change this to black or you can change this to yellow whatever color you like you can change that to that color fine so we have this thing over here let's make it center align as well so click on this one now after that we have this beautiful call to action button let's add that 
So for that, I'll again click on add layer and this time I'll select button. Now if you see over here, the background color is transparent. Okay, the, we have a transparent background color, the text color is white and we have a very thin border, white color border. So let's do that. First, the background color is transparent. So, so if you want to make this transparent, just decrease the opacity to zero. Okay, you can either do like this or you can just set this opacity over here to zero percent. Okay, both the way will do. Once you do so, click on OK. Now you can see the uh, this all this demo over here. This is how it will look. Now the color is white, which is fine. After that, we have border. Yes, we have a border, but the border color is white. As you can see here, the border color is white. And okay, let's make it yes. And let's select a border width. So let's select one pixel over here. Fine. Now hover state. What should happen when we hover over here? So as you can see, when we hover this button, the background color becomes white and the color of the text becomes black. So let's do that. So background color white. Okay color of the text black okay and we don't have any border as such so that's fine and the text over here is all courses so let's add this text click on this text and let's type all courses fine okay once you do so you can select any button from here so i think this is the perfect button so click on this button now you'll have this button over here now, as you can see, this is exactly the same. We have white color, white background. When we hover this, it becomes white color and uh, the background becomes white and the color becomes black. Now, again, you can set the timing in the same way. Suppose you want to set the timing for this one. You can select this. You can edit it from here. Suppose you want to start it at one second. So we'll type in thousand milliseconds and the duration, how long the animation should go on. So I'll select 1.5 seconds so i'll type in 1500 milliseconds click on ok now for this one this text i'll select this click on edit and this time i'll select all the same okay so let's do it same then the button fine i i want this button to come a bit late so i'll select 1500 instead of thousand and duration will be same 1500 okay now let's see a quick demo as you can see over here this is how it looks if you want to change any animation you can click on that thing go to animation and you can change the animation to anything you want for example slide from right so as you can see now it is sliding from right so you can change the animation you can change everything this is really really easy once you are doing all these settings just go at the top and click on save slide Okay guys, so with this we have completed both the slides. Now we can use them on our home page. So first we'll have to create one home page, one page and name it home page because we haven't created any page yet. So from the left hand side, you'll see something called pages. Click on pages or you can hover on pages and click on add new. Fine, now we can give it any title. So what I'll do, I'll type in home page. Okay, let's give it a title of home page and let's click on publish okay so we are publishing this page now let's see how this page looks like so you have this view page uh, link over here you can open this link in a new tab okay so this is how it is looking very simple now if you see there is one problem over here we have this thing which says our website name slash home page but we don't want it like this in the demo website as you can see it does not say slash home page it is just the website name okay so we'll have to remove this now let me show you how to do that this, this is basically because you know we have created a simple page and we have named it home page so we have just named it home page like we can name it anything but we have not set this page as our home page so let's do that so come back to your dashboard at the left hand side you'll see something called settings hover settings and click on general okay so this is not under general settings it is i think under reading so under settings you will click on reading and here it is by default it is set to uh, your latest post now we'll have to select a static page because we want a different a custom page to be set as the home page 
now under home page here it is under home page select this and select the page which we have just created here it is home page okay now you can just click on save changes now come back to this page and let's refresh and this this thing should be gone but we still should be on this page okay let's see let's refresh this page okay so that thing is gone but we are still on our home page and we don't want this thing as well as you can see we want a very simple page we don't want these things over your home page to be written because here over here no home page or anything is written okay so for that we'll see how to do that let's cut this thing first and here at the top you'll see edit page let's open this in a new tab so that we can edit this page in the background okay so this is what the edit page looks like now that is happening this thing is happening because there is a template that is running this is the default template now we want a template which is called no title because we don't want to show the title on this page so come back over here and at the right hand side you'll see something called page attributes under that there is something called template under template you will see different kind of templates now the one which we have to select is no title so select this one and click on update come back to your website let's refresh and see the changes now as you can see everything is blank now we can easily create uh, whatever we want to do okay so come back over here now there is a very beautiful way of creating website nowadays that is called page builder so we are using a page builder called visual builder it is automatically installed on your website so you don't have to do anything it is a premium plugin but you're getting it for free with this theme okay so to use that page builder you'll have to click on this button which says back end editor okay so once you click on this you'll get some options you can just minimize this page settings just click on over here and here is this section where we have to do everything okay we have to add everything so first we want to add this thing this slider which we created recently so to do so click on add element now that was re slider revolution so here we can search for something for slider revolution and here it is revolution slider click on this now we have to select this slider so we have created two now we have to select the first one that was slider one click on save changes now click on update come back to your website and let's refresh this page and let's see what happens okay guys so as you can see this is how it is now it is almost good but we are missing few things over here first this thing is not working properly this search bar is working but it is not looking good and that is because we did not put any custom css now you don't have to type any css i have everything ready for you and the second thing as you can see uh, we have some gap at the top now we'll have to remove that gap so let's do both the things first let's remove the gap so to remove the gap what you have to do you have to click on this pencil icon which which is the edit row click on that now go to design options now here we have to remove some margin you can add some margin you can add some padding now if you don't know what is a margin what is a padding don't worry we'll see that things later on first we'll have to add some margin in fact we'll have to remove some margin so if you want to add some gap at the top we add some something like 100 pixels 150 pixels 10 pixels but here we don't have to add it we have to remove this space so to remove it we just add a minus sign so instead of 100 pixels we'll type in 150 minus 100 pixels and here i'll type in minus 150 okay so the top margin here as you can see in the top margin i have typed in minus 150 and let's click on save changes click on update let's come back to this page and refresh now as you can see that problem is successfully solved now we have a very beautiful page now let's solve this problem so again come back to your dashboard now scroll down and again click on slider revolution here it is now in that file which i just showed you from where you copied this code and below that code there is something called code for styling now under that code for styling select everything that is under it and copy it from here 
now select this one the first slider that we uh, created click on this pencil button okay you'll see your slider over here now click on slider settings and go at the bottom okay first click on slider settings from here now go at the bottom okay here we have custom CSS now you have to paste everything over here paste everything that you copied from this document all these things under code for styling and click on save settings come back to your website and refresh this page now everything should be fine okay so animation is working and this thing is also working perfectly now we have this thing and it is still re really looking beautiful so the first section is complete now we can get rid of this page now again click on uh, open this edit page link in a new tab now again come back to your dashboard and now it's time to create this section the second section so let's do that come back over here and click on this plus button it will add a new element click on add element and first at the top we have some simple text so there are two ways of adding text first we'll see one by one first we'll see the first way and next time when something like this comes we'll see the second way of adding text so first let's add a simple text block here it is if you don't find this just search for text block you'll find it over here this is the one okay here it is your text block a simple text now you can just copy everything from here okay and paste it over here so we have copied and pasted it over here now if you see over here everything is center aligned so let's make it center aligned so select everything and select this button it will make everything center aligned and there is some gap at top and bottom in fact we forgot to put some gap at top and bottom so we'll see how to do that first click on save changes now let's add some gap at top and bottom so we want to add some gap at top and bottom of this text so what we'll do we'll select this section we'll click on this edit button go to design options and here we have to add some padding you can add some padding and margin both will do the work but i'll add padding i'll add 50 pixels top and 50 pixels bottom padding you can increase or decrease this number according to your choice now click on save changes now this will add some gap at top and bottom now let's add these images so again click on this add button now search for image and select single image because we want a single image so select single image now we have to select an image from media library so i'll click on add new image upload files select files okay now let's see here we have banner one let's select this one click on open you'll find all these images for free in the video description below just click on that link and you can download everything now click on set image now after that you will see image size now by default it is set to thumbnail but we want the full size so just type in full over there okay now image placement center image style we don't want any style on click action what should happen when someone clicks on this image so if you want you can link it to a larger image or you can link it to a custom link so you can just type in open custom link and you can type in the link which you want to open okay i'll type in hashtag over here okay so if you want this link to open in same window you can select same window if you want this link to open in a new window you can select new window okay rest everything is fine click on save changes now if you see over here we have four different images so what we'll have to do we'll have to add four different columns now adding and making that is really really easy what we can do we can select we can hover over here and we'll get all these options so this is the four column option one by four plus one by four plus one by four plus one by four select this one now as you can see we have four different columns 
Now again, you have to repeat the same step, but there is one simple technique. What you can do, you can hover this thing and click on this uh, button. It will clone or duplicate this image. We'll do it uh, four times and we'll drag everything from this side to all the columns. Now we don't have to type in again full size image and center align and all those things. It will save a lot of time. Now the only thing that we have to do, we have to change the image. So let's do that. Click on this pencil icon. Again, remove this image and let's add a new one. Click on upload files, select files. Let's select this one, open, set image, save changes. Edit the third one, remove this image, click on add new, upload files. Let's select this file, click on open, set image, save changes and let's add the last one. Fine, now again remove this one, click on add new image, upload files, select files and the last one, banner 4, click on open, set image. Save changes. Now we can update this page and let's refresh this page and see what happens. Okay guys, so as you can see, this is how it is looking. I think this is looking nice, but the only problem I think over here is that we don't have any gap at the bottom. Okay, so we need to add some gap below these images so that we have a nice amount of gap over here. Now we'll do that thing easily and after that we'll have to add this slider. So let's do that. Come back over here. First we'll have to add some gap below these images. So I'll click on this pencil icon. Go to design options and click on padding and let's add maybe 30 pixels bottom padding. We don't want any top padding. We don't want any gap at the top because there is a nice amount of gap over here. So I'll just type in 30 in the bottom and click on save changes. And after that, we'll have to add this slider. So that is really easy. Click on add new element, search for slider revolution or revolution slider. Select this one. Now this time we'll have to add slider two. click on save changes. Let's again update this page. Come back over here, refresh and everything should be fine. Okay, so we have a nice amount of gap at the bottom and this slider is also showing over here. We have the button, text and everything over here. Now after this, we have to add this one, this simple text. This is just some simple text. You can easily do it. And after that, we'll see how to add and make make these courses. We'll, uh, we have already seen how to make these courses. We'll see how to add them and how to change the design and display it on the home page. Okay. So come back to this page, click on add new element and again we'll select text block. Now let's copy this simple text from here so that we don't have to type anything. We'll just copy and paste it over here. Click on save changes. Now again here we have three different columns. So again I'll hover over here and this time I'll select one by three plus one by three plus one by three it will add three different columns. Okay, so we have one column, two and three. Now in the second column, again, we want simple text block. So I'll click on add element, text block, and I'll copy this dummy text from here. This is just some simple dummy text. Copy it and paste it over here. Click on save changes. And in the third section or in the third column, I'll add this text. So you don't have to copy and paste all this dummy text. You'll have to put in something about your company, about your clients or something like that. That will really help you. Okay, so click on this add button, text block. And let's add all this dummy text over here. Click on save changes. Now again, if you see, there is a nice amount of gap at top and bottom. So let's add that. Click on this pencil icon. Go to design options and let's add maybe 50 pixels top and bottom. So just type in 50 padding top, 50 padding bottom. Click on save changes. Fine. After that, after that, we'll see what happens. First, let's update the page. Come back for here. Let's refresh the page and see what happens. Let's scroll down. So we have all the three columns and it is really looking nice. So it is working. 
now it's time to add this text and this time we will not use text block we'll use something else or maybe this time also i'll use text block but when we'll create about us and all these pages i'll use something different but now let's add text block okay let's use the same thing so you can copy this text from here come back to this page now as you can see it is really easy creating a website using a page builder that's why a page builder is really highly recommended now again click on add element and again select text block and paste in the text or you can just type in any text you want so i'll just paste it over here i'll select everything and i'll make it center aligned because here it is center aligned and click on save changes now i want to give some you know spacing at top and bottom so i'll again click on this pencil button go to design options and maybe i'll add 20 pixels top and bottom so i'll just add 20 at top padding and 20 at bottom padding and click on save changes now after that i have this thing all the courses displaying over here so i'll click on this add button okay then after that i'll search for let me see go to this section called vibe builder and we have vibe grid so you can also search from here you can just type in vibe grid v i b e vibe grid you'll see it over here click on this okay so do you want to display any title i will select no select type of the what uh, what is the post type that you want to display so we want to display courses over here so we'll select courses if you want to display only quiz certificates events or anything you can select i am selecting only courses so i'll select courses which courses do you want to show or display on the home page so you can select any one for example we can select the courses which has most students or featured course highly rated courses and so on so i'll just select the recently published one and we have some more option now here we have to select the style of the course okay so as i said you earlier so this is the style and this style is the fourth one okay this one this is the style which is there over here so if you want this exact same style you can select the fourth one now what i would recommend you is you can just click on everything and you can see how this uh, different style looks and whatever you like you select this one i like this one the fourth style that's why i'm selecting this one now scroll down here we have grid machinery layout one column in full width now i want to show four columns okay as you can see i have one two three four columns so i'll select four column in full width and rest everything is fine just click on save changes click on update and hopefully everything should be fine come back to your website refresh this page let's see what happens okay so this section is looking really beautiful we are displaying or it is displaying only one course because we have created just one simple course that's why we are not able to see many different courses when we create more courses we'll see all those things over here we have created only one that's why we are seeing only one now let's see how to do what we have next we have this section now so let's add this uh, simple images over here again come back over here click on add new again search for single image here it is click on single image media library click on add new image upload files select files and let me select all the files at once okay you can just press ctrl and select all the files and click on open okay all the files all all the images are getting installed so let's select one by one let's select the first one click on set image okay after that image size i will again type in full full size then alignment center and rest everything is fine click on save changes now we want uh, around four or six uh, different columns so i'll select six columns this is the one and i'll copy this image six times or five times and drag all the images over here in different columns and now i just have to change the image so i'll click on this edit button remove this image click on add new select this one click on set image save changes select the third one edit it 
change the image click on add new let's select this one set image save changes edit the fourth one remove the existing image click on add new and let's add this click on save save changes fifth one remove this one click on add new select this click on set image click on save changes okay now click on update come back to this page and refresh this let's see what happens now let's see how it looks okay guys so this is how it is looking and this is looking nice i think the only thing which we are missing is some gap so let's add some gap at top at top of this section this image section rest everything is fine so again come at the bottom click on this pencil button go to design and let's add maybe 20 pixels top padding click on save changes again update this page refresh it and i think it should work let's see what happens okay guys so we have a decent amount of gap over here so this is working fine okay so we have successfully completed the home page very very easily i hope you guys enjoyed this now let's create a new page which is the about us page let's see how it looks click on this page about okay so this is how it looks let's create this one so first we'll have to create a new page so again come to, come back to your dashboard and click on add new page so you can click on this button or you can hover pages and click on add new both the things will do now let's give it a title of about us so let's type in about us again we'll select the same template which is no title now click on back end editor so first we have this section this beautiful section let's do and let's see how to make this one we have a background image uh, and this really looks nice we have a title subtitle and a call to action button now this time we'll use something different and we don't we won't use text block to create text we'll use something different let's see what we'll use so come back over here click on add element first we'll let's search for heading and this is the one which which we have to use custom heading okay so text source will be custom text and the first text is get started with so you can copy it from here or you can just type in any text you want get started with element tag so i'll select h2 text align center as you can see it is centered font size i won't put anything over here because i have already selected h2 but if you want to make it smaller bigger you can do so we'll do that with this text okay but for this h2 is fine and color let's make it white so let's select white color from here use theme default family yes we want to do that now everything is looking fine click on save changes now again click on this plus button to add a new custom heading and again search for custom heading this is the one now this time let's type in online education again custom text and let's type the text online education and this time i'll select h1 because h1 is bigger than h2 now again center align font size uh, i'll put in 6 r e m okay this is a uh, custom font size you can put in 100 pixels 50 pixels whatever you like text color i'll put in white color after that font family open sans okay i'll select open sans from here now font weight i'll select maybe bold 800 bold uh, regular okay because this is quite bolder text so i'll select 800 bold regular now click on save changes again and after that we have a beautiful button as you can see over here so let's add this button now again click on this add new button now search for button over here now we have to select this one okay simple button go button click on this now what do you want the text on the button so here it says 
get started now so i'll type the same thing get started now okay you can link this button to anything you want so i'll just put a hashtag in the url i don't want to link it to anything now click on set link after that style so modern style classic style there are many different style of button but here the one which we have used is a simple button so that is a flat button so i'm using flat now there are many beautiful types like modern and 3d you can use them as well i'm using the simple flat button and shape i don't want rounded shape i want a simple square button color I am selecting blue because here I have selected blue. You can select any beautiful color, any beautiful shape. I am just trying to make it exactly like the demo website, but you don't have to do that. You have to see what looks much beautiful according to you and just do whatever you find beautiful. Okay. Now size normal, which is fine. Alignment center. After that, uh, if you, if you want, you can use some icons rest everything is fine click on save changes now you can see a preview of this button this is how it will look now again what we'll do is we'll add or maybe we'll remove the gap so again we'll do minus 150 over here click on save changes like we did in the home page because we have to remove the gap at the top and if you see there is a background image to this entire section and we have a nice amount of gap at top and bottom of this content so let's do that click on this pencil button to edit this row now row stretch we want to make it stretch row so that will make it full width after that go to design options okay now we'll have to add some padding okay as you can see this nice amount of gap over here and at the bottom so let's add maybe 100 top padding and 100 bottom padding that should do and we want a background image so here you can select the background image click on this add new go to upload files select files and go to slider i guess no let's see where we have that image slider no we don't have that in the slider okay this is the one parallax bg select this click on open now again click on set image save image and click on publish let's cut this page because we are done with the home page now let's open this page in a new tab so you can open this link which says view page in a new tab let's see how this page is looking okay so this is looking nice very very beautiful now the only thing which i think is left is we need some more gap at top and bottom like here we have a nice amount of gap at top and bottom so it was i guess 100 so let's make it maybe 200 or you can increase it let's make it 250 pixels top and bottom really nice amount of gap so i'm making 250 pixels top and bottom padding click on save changes click on update and now we'll have nice amount of gap at both top and bottom let's refresh okay as you can see now it is really looking amazing so we are done with the first section now let's see how the second section looks so this is how the second section looks we have a background color now this time instead of background image we'll use background color which is black and we'll see how to use these different icons and all this animation and so on so let's do that come back to this page click on this plus button to add a new element and first we'll add icon so search for icon over here okay this is the one because this is a simple icon there are hundreds of icons you can use or maybe not icon let let me show you a easier way of using icon so let me delete this let me delete this as well and click on plus button and let's add a text block okay so i'm just showing you how to add icon in a different way let's delete all this text from here now there is something called short codes which are very very useful now if you want to make if you want to use the short codes it is very simple you have this icon over here vibe short codes when you click on this arrow 
you'll get a lot of short codes so you can use anything like pop-ups progress bar testimonials video now the one which we want is icons so click on this icons okay so there are many different icons that you can use now let's see whether we get that css icon this is a simple css icon you can use any icon but i'm trying to use the same icon so that it looks similar to the demo website let's let me see whether i can find that or not okay okay let's use this icon instead of that one the windows icon so let's select this one fine now icon size this is a really big size so what i'll do instead of zero i'll select 250 pixels and uh, custom style text style i'll i'll select instead of text style i'll select custom and icon color as you can see is white so i'll select white from here icon color let's make it white fine okay i think this is not working we can we can use this okay just leave this thing leave all these color options and click on insert short code now we can do that manually for example if you see this is color and we have this quotation marks over here so in in this double quotations you can put the color so the code for white color is hashtag fff if you don't know all these codes it is really simple you can go to google and type in hex colors h e x c o l o r s or color okay now here suppose you want white so you can go to white section and if you see this is the code if you want blue you can go to blue you can select any color if you want red you go to red you select any color and you'll get this codes over here so the white color for white is f f f you can type f three times of or six times it will do the same job so let me copy this code and let us put and paste it over here now we don't want any background color but we want a hover color so as you can see when we hover this it becomes blue so let us select this blue color okay let me select this blue color okay this one fine now let me copy this code from here now hover color i'll put this color over here and rest everything looks fine so click on save changes now here we have two different columns the first column is this icon but we have another column and we have all this text and buttons over here so let's do that again first we'll have to add a column so how over here and select the second one half plus half so we have two columns again click on add new and again select text block so first we have very simple text so what you can do we can simply copy this thing from here and let's paste it over here and if you notice all this uh, text is white so what we'll do is we'll select all this text from here go to text color and select white color so all the text has become white now the only thing that we have to do is add this button so again we'll use the same short code system but this time instead of icons we'll use buttons so click on this icon select buttons okay link url we'll just type in hashtag over here button style i want a simple blue color style anchor what should it say so it it says become an instructor okay so let me type become an instructor now later on in this video we'll create a page a sign up page or registration page for becoming an instructor so after we create that you can come back to this thing and you can replace the link url to that page link okay now click on insert short code click on save changes and hopefully everything should be fine let's see what happens click on update come back to this page and refresh it now scroll down okay so there is some problem okay fine the problem is very simple we forgot to put that uh, you know background color black background color okay and also we'll have to add nice amount of gap at top and bottom because all the text over here is white that's why we are not able to see it so let's add a black background color over here click on this pencil button go to design now background color and let's select black from here 
and let's add some gap at top and bottom so let's add maybe um, maybe 100 pixels top and bottom padding click on save again click on update come back to this page refresh and this time everything should be fine okay so again it is looking better but still we forgot one more thing and that is to make this row full width row that's why we are getting this gap from both the side we don't want that so again come back over here click on this pencil icon now row stretch we'll have to select stretch row instead of default select stretch row click on save changes update come back to this page and refresh and it will solve the problem okay so let's scroll down and now as you can see this is looking beautiful and all the settings are done okay so this is now looking awesome now let's see the last section this is also a very easy section let's start creating this come back to this page click on add new element and again search for text block and here we have a very simple text so we don't have to do anything just copy it from here and paste it over here the only thing that we need to notice or you need to notice is this thing okay the bottom text has some uh, i has some you know hyperlink so what let me show you how to put that first let me remove this so it is just a simple text but if you want to add some link like we have it over here when you click on this button or when you click on this text it will open some link so if you want to do that if you want to add some link to this text you can select this text and you'll have this option which says insert or edit link click on this and paste in the url that you want to link so i'll just put in a hashtag over here and click on apply now as you can see this has turned blue which means the settings are applied now click on save changes again we want two different columns so let's do that how over here select one half by half so select this one now in this also we'll have to you will have to create these two things these two beautiful things so click on add new search for text block i'm trying to use text block as much as possible you can do it by other ways as well but i'm trying to use text block because using that is very simple and you know when you use the same thing you become expert in that so that is what i'm using that is why i'm using that so here first we'll have to add the image and then some text as you can see over here we have the image and then te some text first let me copy this text now first let's add an image so click on add media upload files select files and let's add this guy's image select this image click on open okay now click on insert into page okay so here it is now what you have to do you have to click on this image and align it to the left so select this one now after that we'll have to add the text so paste in the text over here now come back give a space between all these things now let's add another image so click on add media upload files select files and let's add this image now click on open now click on insert into page now this time let's copy this text and paste it over here okay we forgot one thing to make it left align okay so select this image and select align left fine this will solve the problem now click on save changes now let's add some gap at top and bottom so select this pencil go to design option padding let's add 50 pixels top and bottom padding and click on save changes click on update come back to this page refresh it and everything should be fine now let's scroll down as you can see this section is also looking beautiful so we are also done with the about us page now the next thing that we have to do is create the contact us page first let's see how a contact us page looks like so click on contact us okay the map is not displaying over here we'll fix that so we have this map and we have all this text over here okay so we'll see how to do all these things it's really easy so let's cut this page now because we don't need this cut this thing as well come back to your dashboard and click on add new to add a new page 
now let's give it a title of contact us so just type in contact us and this time instead of default template we'll have to select contact contact page okay this one now this will add this map over here but this map will not show right now we'll have to do some changes over here we'll see how to do that don't worry now after that we have all these things to be shown so again we'll click on back and editor click on add element first one is simple text block as you can see this is just some simple text so i'll copy it and paste it over here let me select everything paste it click on save changes and this time as you can see we have one column over here and the next column is divided into two columns so let's add something like this hover over here and let's search for something like this okay so i think uh, do we have anything like this mm, i don't think so i think we'll have to add a custom column for this one so what you can do you can hover over here and click on custom now what i have to do now let's do one thing first let's divide it so let's make it half one by two plus now instead of half because if we add half plus half it will become two columns but i want the second column to be divided into two so that we can easily do that by making one by four plus one by four this should do hopefully now click on update fine it has worked as you can see we have one column and the second column is divided into two different columns so i hope you understood this thing now let's copy this text from here our philosophy and click on this add button text block now i think i am going a little bit faster than usual and the reason is very simple because creating contact us and about us page is not really important you can just import some templates and do it easily but uh, after this we'll do some important stuff so that's why i want to you know go a bit faster so that we can you know go on to those important stuff i hope you understand that so we have copied this click on save changes now here also we have a text block and this time we have our contact informations so copy it and let's paste it over here click on save changes okay now let's add some gap at top and bottom okay so we can click on this pencil button design options and let's add 30 pixels top and bottom padding click on save changes after that we have this thing over here the contact form and here we have this accordion so let's add that come back to this page now scroll down and click on add new element and again select text block and now let's add this thing first we have this heading which says send us a message so let's type that heading first and after that we have different fields form fields so adding that is also very easy we'll be using short codes for this so again select wipe short codes and let's search for think forms something like that let's and the, okay here it is forms so select forms first you have to enter the email where you want to receive this uh, messages first for example if i type my name email and if i want to contact you then what is the email on which you have want me to contact you so you have to put that email over here you have to put the subject you can put the website name or something like that so that you know where these mails are coming from now the first label is for name first field is for name so i'll select name and i'll select single line text and if you want to make it required you can select required okay now click on insert short code once you're done it will add this short code now after that we have a short code for email so again click on add short code select forms you can again change the email address subject now instead of name we want this to say email so let's type in email fine single text box or what do you want so we want single line text box and validation we will select email 
click on insert short code after that we have phone so we'll add another short code click on forms now let's make it phone and validation numeric or we can select phone number click on insert short code and after that we have simple text box or message box so let's add that and it says query as you can see so again let's add a short code forms and this time it says query or you can just type in message it's all up to you and now we don't have to select single line because it is a message we don't want single line we want multiple lines so we'll select multi line text box or text area and validation we don't want any validation to be applied to this one so we'll select none and, and click on insert short code and the last one is a simple submit button so again we'll click on add short code and forms and now form element will select submit button validation none and you can say what the button says for example here the button says submit so you can type in submit over here fine now click on insert short code click on save changes and again we have two different columns so let's divide this to two different columns and in the next column we'll have something called accordion so search for that a double c o r this is the one accordion now as you can see the first section it says our our mission and we have some text in it so let's copy this text and let's edit the first section so the titles should be our mission and just leave this section id and just click on save changes and in this title we want to add some text so what we'll do we'll click on this add button text block and we'll add the text whatever you want and click on save changes and similarly you can add section 2 section 3 and everything fine so i won't do that i won't i don't want to waste your time and my time and uh, let's add some space at the bottom so let's click on pencil go to design and let's add maybe 50 pixels bottom padding click on save changes and make sure contact page is selected click on publish let's view this page in a new tab let's see what happens okay so the map is not working as expected and rest everything is working and it is looking nice now this is not working because to make this thing work we need something called api we need to create some api so it is really easy open a new tab and type in console.developers.google.com now first we'll need to enable apis and services so click on this button which says enable api and services okay first we'll have to create a product but i don't need to create it because i have already created it but if you have not yet created it you can click on over here and click on this button to create a new project okay you can name it anything and after that you can follow my steps what i'm whatever i'm going to show you let us go to console.developers.google.com okay as you can see this project block dude is selected after that you have to enable some apis and services so click on this button which says enable apis and services and search for google map okay google map javascript so this is the one google maps javascript api open this and click on enable okay so it is enabling the api okay so it says to use this api you need credentials click create credentials to get started so you can click on over here credentials and click on create credential now from here you will have to select api key so select api key and we have the api key over here but we cannot use it right now first we'll have to verify a domain so first let's cancel this thing go to domain verification first copy your domain from here so this is our domain lms2.nayashik.com copy it come over here go to add domain paste it over here and click on add domain now it will take you to some different page where you will have to verify that you own this domain so again you will have to click on this button which says add a property and paste in your domain 
click on continue now they have this file so you have to download this HTML verification file as you can see it has downloaded and we have to upload this file on our website and uh, after that we can click on verify so you can do it easily using FileZilla so open FileZilla fine now you have to find the folder of your website so I am using lms2.nayashik.com so let me find that folder here it is lms2.nayashik.com now you have to save you have to paste this file which we just downloaded in this folder so what I'll do first I'll open this file in a folder okay this is the one I'll copy this file on my desktop so that I can easily uh, open this then again I'll go to FileZilla I'll refresh my desktop now I have this file over here I'll just drag this file on my website folder okay it says transfer finished let's cancel this now I'll co come over here I'll click on I am not a robot click on verify fine so it says it is verified now we can go back so click on this button again go back or maybe you can just cut this thing now again it will ask you to uh, uh, put in your domain name so you can just copy your domain name from here come back over here paste in click on add domain now this time it will take as you can see it has accepted your domain now come back to credentials copy this credential or copy this api key just copy it and now we have to paste it over here on our website now from here at the left hand side you have wp lms however wp lms and click on i guess miscellaneous click on miscellaneous now we have to copy this code from here this api code from here and paste it in this miscellaneous settings now here we have different options just scroll down uh, and let's see what option we need so here we have google maps api key just paste in that api key over here and now here, here you have to paste in the latitude and longitude of your location now if you don't know the latitude and longitude which i obviously guess you won't know that so it's a very simple trick just open a new tab type in lat long dot net okay it's a website it will help you to get your latitude and longitude code now now type in your address over here what i'll do is i'll just type in mumbai click on find and now you can select any location you want for example this location whenever you click on wherever you click you'll get this latitude and longitude so first copy this latitude come back over here and paste it after that put a comma again come over here copy the longitude and paste it now we have set do you want to show the satellite view or the road map you can select any one of this you can select road map if you want and you can go and click on save changes now come back to this page let's refresh and hopefully this should solve this problem okay so as you can see now the map is showing and this is looking beautiful so with this we have completed our contact us page now it's time to create different sidebars let me show you what do i mean by that let's go to our home page now let's open any one of this course we have only one course so let's open this course and let's open one course in the demo website as well so that we can you know understand the difference over here so this is our course this is our sidebar we don't have anything in our sidebar we just have this simple thing okay but here if you see in the demo website we have some beautiful sidebar over here like related course widget then we have top rated courses courses review and so on so let's add all these widgets all these sidebars over here fine so come back to your website and hover appearances and click on widgets now from here you will have to search for single course sidebar which is so let's see who oh, here it is course sidebar you will have to you know paste in all the widgets over here so let me show you first one is related course widget which is a carousel as you can see it is a simple carousel so let's search for that let's see buddy press course stat buddy press course search widget 
related courses widget okay so this is the one we want buddy press related courses widget select this one and from here select course sidebar and click on add widget so it will add a widget over here now what do you want the title to be related course yes show from same course category or show from same instructor you can select anything you want number of courses to show and this style so here we have course style image style site style and whatever style you want fine after you're done with this click on save after this we have top rated course so come back to this page again and now select this one buddy press course widget if you want to add you can just drag this widget over here okay this is also a way to do that now what do you want the title to be so here the title is top rated course you can just copy this title or just type it over here top rated course style single or carousel you can select your style or list so i'm selecting list from here okay list with reviews or rating list you can select that you can select any category to show over here and order by name and all those things number of courses courses to show five click on save after that we have courses review so let's search for that course review here it is course review widget let's drag it over here at the bottom course review and we want the title to be course reviews which is fine style is single which is fine number of reviews to show five fine this should work let's refresh and see what happens okay first of all we don't have any related course because we have only one course and in the top rated course we have only one single course but now you know that how you do it okay so this was the sidebar for single course now we have to see the sidebar for the course page for example if you go to this course category technology let's click on that now as you can see there is a sidebar over here as well now we can control this thing as well now let me show you so let's go to this technology from this demo website and you, if you see over here this is how it will show we have this carousel then top rated i think this is the same uh, they have used the same thing okay so you can also use the same widgets over here here also it is showing the same widgets so this is how you do and you change the course you know widgets and for different single course multi course and for different pages as well you can add some sidebar or some widget to different type of pages now let's see some really important settings so first let's get rid of all these things come back to your dashboard and hover lms and click on settings now these are really important settings first is this student login redirect okay i think before this we have to check one thing so what you can do you can scroll down and you can select settings and let's open this in a new tab so that we are on this page we don't have to exit this page let's see the general settings okay so this is done just make sure that that this membership and anyone can register is tick marked okay just make sure this is done so let's come back over here student login redirect so after this student logins to your website which page do you want them to show first home page course page dashboard page whatever page you want them to show you can select that page instructor login redirect now for instructor it will be better to you know show the instructing course page because they are interested in the courses they teach or you can select dashboard any page you want now we have some more settings over here enable one session per user you can set this thing hide administrators in instructors okay so you can do these things as well and let's see some important settings okay so here it is make sure these things are tick mark enable student menus enable instructor menus because we want to show students a different menu and instructors a different menu that is really important i'll explain you why and you'll understand it much better after that you can select the visibility course member who all can see the course member page who all can see the curriculum page and so on and rest everything is not really 
you know important but you can go through all these options okay and if uh, you can change everything according to you now let's click on save settings now go to registration forms now here you can control uh, the options that you want for user whenever they try to register you to your website so let's add a new form click on add registration form and let's add a form for instructors let's type in instructor form anything you can name it anything you want now let's click on add form now as you can see here we have one field automatically done field name you can add some more field you can go to settings and you can control some more things over here like skip mail verification register and log in simultaneously and so on it's all up to you you can assign a role to the user so for example you can assign student so anyone who you know signs up or registers with your website by default they will be students and if they want to become instructor they'll have you'll have to manually accept them to become instructor or if you want the uh, to select instructor you can select that you can select the default role if you want okay click on save we'll see these things later on in more detail don't worry now go to course settings okay what all do you want to show price prerequisite course course duration course location course labels and so on okay these are all the details that will be shown okay course badge and everything now logged in menu course menu member type group type will see these menus different uh, in different way first we'll have to create some menus so just leave these things for now now go to commissions because this is a very important thing we'll have to set a commission so first we'll set a commission for example for this course you can select a commission for example i am setting this to maybe 50 percent so i am setting a commission of 50 percent to this course so whenever some uh, this course makes a sale the instructor whoever has created this course will get 50 percent and i as the administrator and owner of the website will get 50 percent now to set this commission just click on set commission And whenever you want to make payment to this commission you can just click on pay commissions you'll see you'll you'll have to select the commission time okay set time period click on show if there is any sale made you'll see over here so there are no sales made but if if there there is something that is made if there is any sale made you can pay them through paypal now let's create different menus for different uh, users for example different menu for instructor and a different menu for simple student so to do so hover appearances and click on menus now we can name it anything for example let's name it instructor menu okay so that we know that this menu is for instructor you can name it anything you want click on create menu so what are the different pages that you want the instructor to see so if you want to see all the pages you can click on view all now we want to show them the home page about us page all courses page contact us page then course status page if you want okay my account page very important okay find all these pages click on add to menu so they will see all these pages over here and from here from the bottom you will select main menu for instructor this is very important now click on save menu now before proceeding further let's make few more pages because there is there will be one more page required for the instructor which is to create a course where will they go to create a course so let's create few pages so what you can do you can hover pages and click on add new now what i'll do i'll open this add new in a new tab so that we are you know on this page and we are also on this page we don't have to exit this page now let's go name this let's give it a title of create a course fine now we just have to do one simple thing under template just click on just select create content you just don't have to do anything just give it a title anything you want and select the template create content and click on publish 
Now let's add some more pages. So click on add new. Let's add a page called become an instructor. Okay, so this page will be uh, shown to all the regular user who want to become an instructor and go to template and select. Now go to templates and select start course page and click on publish. So once you're done that come back to this page, the menus page and let's refresh it. Now we need to add one more page over here. So click on view all and let's add this page, create a course and click on add to menu. Now you can rearrange this according to your need. Now this is the most important page, create a course page. Make sure you, you know, set this page for instructors and make sure you select this thing main menu for instructor and click on save menu. Now let's create a new menu for uh, students. So click on create a new menu. Let's name it student menu or students menu. Click on create menu. Now let's see what all pages do you do you want to show them. We want the home page about us, all courses page and become an instructor page because the user might be interested in becoming an instructor. So we will add this page as well. Contact us page and create a course page. So when they actually this is not required but because when they will click on this create a course page it will get a they will get a message that your user you first sign up as an as, uh, instructor and so on my account page and add to menu again you can rearrange this according to your wish okay it's all up to you now just make sure that you select main menu for students now click on save menu now we'll have to create a new menu for anyone who is you know not registered who is just a first time visitor they are neither a student nor a, a instructor so for them we'll have to create a new menu so click on create a new menu and let's name it primary menu or anything you want like main menu primary menu it's all up to you and just make sure primary menu or main menu is selected from the bottom here it is main menu now here this is the page uh, where you know anyone can see who all are not logged into your website they will see this menu so we want the home page about us page all courses page and then we want uh, okay so fine we want the my account page because when they will click on my account they it will ask you is it will ask them to first register okay so that is also very important and uh, what do you want we want co contact us we want become an instructor because the person who is coming to your website might be interested in becoming an instructor so make sure you have this thing as well now click on add to menu now there is one more page which we need and that we won't find it over here we'll have to go to custom links and type in your website link over here just copy it from here paste it over here and after forward slash just type in register okay fine now here you can just type in register now this is the registration for the website a simple registration so this is automatically created when you, uh, you know just make that allow registration thing when you tick mark that this page will automatically be created your website name slash register Make sure main menu is selected and click on save menu. Now here we didn't have any menu. Now let's refresh and see whether we have a new menu or not. Okay, as you can see now after we refreshed, we have all our menu over here and this is looking nice. Okay, so this is working. Okay, so we are almost done. Let's see one demo whether this every whether everything is working fine or not. So what we'll do, we'll copy the website link. We'll open this in a new incognito window so that we can we are logged out and we can see everything properly. Okay, I just noticed one thing. I think we'll have to, you know, decrease the margin a little bit more so that, you know, we still have some margin left over here in the home page. So we'll have to do that first. So come back to your dashboard and go to pages. Now search for home page. Here it is click on edit 
Now select this first section, click on this edit this row, go to design option and instead of 150, let's make it 250 and that should solve the problem. Click on save changes, click on update, come back to this page, let's refresh and that should sol solve the problem. As you can see that has solved the problem so as you can see for a new visitor this is how your website will look okay we, they will have all these page options now if they want to go register to your website they can click on register now this is how all the pages field that they will require they will require the username email password and all these things and name field if you want to increase this profile fields you can do it easily you can come back to your dashboard at the left hand side you will see users how over that and click on profile fields and you can increase and decrease or you can add or subtract some fields over here for example suppose you wanna if you wanna make or if you wanna add a new full field just click on add new field button and you can name it anything for example let's add bio bio field okay let's let's type something like type something about yourself something like this okay now what do you want what is the type text block number multi-line text area so i want to select this one you can add a date selector for example if you're adding a field for date of birth then you will select date selector okay now click on i will select multi-line text area because this is a bio field now whether you want to make it required or not and visibility who all can see this thing so if any, if everyone can see this thing, uh, you can select everyone and obviously the user can change that visibility options. Now let's click on save. Come back to this page. Let's see whether that thing has taken place or not. Let's refresh this page. Now we can see we also get a bio option over here. So you can add multiple options over there. Now this is the menu that we get. Now let's create a new account over here. Let me add uh, just a random username. My email address. Okay. Fine. Let me choose a password. Hopefully I typed it right. Name is Nair Sheikh. Bio is bio. Let's click on complete sign up okay now it will ask us to activate our account so for that we'll have to go to our email address and we'll do all those changes so let's go to gmail.com and let me go to my account i don't remember the password by the way let's see okay it, it was right now here you have wordpress one mail from wordpress activate your account Let's open this, click on this link. Let's cut all these things. Okay, so as you can see, it says your account is now active. Now we can see all the courses. We can go to all courses. We can go to homepage. Suppose we want to, you know, enroll in this course, then we can just uh, open this thing. We can click on this button, take this course. Okay, we can add to cart this course. Click on checkout. Okay, fill in all the billing information and pay through PayPal, then we can use this course. Fine, so it is really, really easy. Now this was, this is working fine for students. Now let's see whether it is working for instructors or not. So let's first sign out from here. So let's log out from here. Fine, now we have the same thing over here. Now again, we can register. Now I think there is one thing which is left, which is which we are missing. We can add one more option over here. See, because we are getting, a, we have only one registration form, and we don't know whether the person is trying to register as a student or as a instructor. So I did that. That is why I always do a demo check so that we can see whether everything is working fine or not. So I think we can add one more field over here. So let's do that in the user field. So how our users and select profile fields. Now let's add one more field, click on add new field. And let me put in a title role or maybe sign up as sign up as 
so you can just put in do you want to become and you can add some in description like selective or anything you like you know do you want to become oh i don't like typing man do you want to become an instructor or a student okay now instead of text box we can select something different like uh, drop down select box and we can have custom order for example first let's type student and let's add another option and let's type instructor and we can add a default value of student okay and rest this is required this should be required let's click on save let's come back over here let's refresh now as you can see we get this option we'll have to choose whether we want to sign up as an instructor or as a student this was very important now let us create a new username i'm just using something different and let me use a new or a different email address same password Okay, name can be same it's fine bio sign up as instructor click on complete sign up fine activate your account go to gmail this time we are using some different accounts so let me add that account okay here it is activate your account click on this link cut these things okay your account is now active but still there is one more problem in fact that is not a problem and that is good for us for example if they can if they will click they they are seeing the same menu which you know which is showing for users because whether they select instructor or student they will they are still you know registered as simple students now why did we put that thing then the multiple select or the that drop down menu that whether you want to uh, sign up as an instructor or a, as a student that was because for us now let me explain you now as an administrator you will click on all users now as an instructor you can see that there are two different people who have signed up now if if the user has selected student then you don't have to do anything but if the user has selected instructor then you will have to change that user's role to instructor okay so let us see how to do that click on extended okay so let us see so this person has selected instructor which means this person wants to become an instructor so we'll have to change this uh, person's role to instructor okay so let me show you how to do that so click on profile and here instead of subscriber select instructor and click on update user okay you have to do it manually so that you know it, your website doesn't get spammed now when the user as you can see the menu is for a uh, user simple student menu but when we refresh the menu should be different as you can see now the menu is different now this menu is for instructors which means that uh, the uh, settings have successfully been saved now we can create a course okay he can click on this button create a course and he'll get this option okay if you want to create a new course he'll click on create your own course and he'll have to put in all this information like first is the title so let us put a title like just simple title select a category or add a new category short description i am not putting anything now let's click on create course yes create a new course okay maximum duration maybe this course is for our maybe one hour so i'll select one from here i'll select r prerequisite course we don't have any you can set the type and all these things so user can set everything user can you know set instruct uh, instruction course instruction course completion message and click on save settings now they can create curriculums for example they can click on add section they can give a title for example let's give a title section one then they can create a unit under that create a new unit 
they can give a title like unit one create unit fine they have unit one over here now you can now they can also add some media like video or image in this uh, course in this unit they can click on add media select files select the image or video and it will be done okay now click on save they can also add and create new quiz from here so that is also very uh, nice and very useful now you can click on close and save curriculum click on save a course now pricing they can set a pricing to this course okay free course or whatever kind of course create a new product and uh, subscription type and so on now click on save pricing click on save course now they can click on this button send for approval click on save course now they can view their course but obviously their course is not yet published it is sent for approval and that's why we are seeing this thing private course because not this is not yet approved now you as an administrator has to approve this course now when you click on when you go to your dashboard administrative dashboard you'll see at the right hand side let us see LMS and when you hover LMS you'll see all courses and you'll see that someone has just uploaded a course and it is pending you'll have to modify it and you'll have to publish it once you click on this edit button and once you publish this this will be published okay and if you find okay there is some problem over here this person has not entered the description then you can contact that person and you can say you know what your course is not yet uh, ready to publish you have to improve this improve that and so on exactly like udemy what happens in udemy because i make courses on udemy so i know the process what happens okay so i guess this is the end of the video i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you guys have any doubt any questions you can leave them in the comment section below i'll be more than happy to help you guys and if you like this video if you enjoyed this video make sure you subscribe to my channel and also click on that bell icon so that you don't miss any awesome stuff thanks a lot for watching guys see you soon